It's Luke Smith at realvacantland.com. I'm not 100% sure I'm live yet. <clears throat> but we're going to. I think we might be live. Let me make sure. Let me hit some buttons and um, see if we can make this happen. Might have to hit a couple buttons. So I think we're live. If you guys can see this, and uh, if you hit, uh, if you hit some comments, you know, give me a thumbs up or something. That'd be cool. I can tell that you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. Um, so I got. Uh, I'm trying to do it through a couple different sets of software. I'm trying to blast it out on social media in a couple different ways, and so I've got like a a middleman spreading it out to others. It sounds, it looks like uh, the statistics are starting to go. I think YouTube is happening. Um, but I might not be on the right screen on YouTube, so I'm not seeing it. So if you could, um, if you could hit the settings, that would be great. Let me see if I can get out of here. Or if I can figure out the settings. Sorry, guys. Technical. Usually I can figure this out. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't see it. It doesn't seem to be going for me. It says we got 13 viewers on this screen, but I can't see the comments. So um, I might have to pull up a different way to do comments. I might just do comments old school. Let me pull it up in another way. Let me just look up the channel. It doesn't seem to be feeding the comments and if you guys are sending comments. But if you can hear me, so we're going to do the live show this morning. Uh, this is Luke Smith, realvacantland.com. I'm so happy to be here this morning. I'm like ready to dance. I got things going on in a couple different fronts. I can't wait to share with you. I just uh, want to make sure that I'm doing this right. And so let me pull up the old school software and see if I can see it over there instead of the new fancy stuff that doesn't seem to work as well. Or maybe I don't know how to use it as well anyway. Yeah, it's saying something about supported channels aren't. But it's going. So, um... Let me, I just want the old, the old, old, old one. Won't even let me go to the old one. I have to fly blind today, guys. Now I'm really, uh, really frustrated. So, let me just hit a couple buttons. It says we got 19 people watching right now. But I can't find the the one says no data, one says it's going. Bear with me a sec here. Oh, I just saw it. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. I found, I found the old school way of doing it. Okay, starting to see the comments. Rocker Gear Greer starts off saying good morning. Thank you guys, sorry for the technical difficulties getting started on the show today. There's just a lot of, I should show you this whole setup. It's, it's too much really. Um, John Jay says, we see you, good morning. Hello from Knoxville, Tennessee. Kaiser Isabella says, hello, I love your video videos and the game you host is awesome. Keep those great deals coming, exactly. Eric Kansas says, good morning, Luke Skywalker. Good morning, Eric. Hi there, Kurt Butterfield. Hi, Luke and everybody. Morning, Kurt. Backwoods Bungalow live in color on YouTube. Exactly. Old school, bringing it in. Dennis Lane here. Hi, Luke sounds good. Okay, good. We got the audio going, the video going. Love your shirt. Where did you get that? Where did I get this shirt? Guys, I buy all my clothes at the same store. 
I can walk over there. It's called Hanson's. It's like this surf shop. You know, it's, they sell surfboards and they sell surf clothes. I buy, you know, I even, I even bought some pants there once upon a time. Surf Shore that sells pants, right? Like, how does that make any sense? Uh, it's usually just shorts, like uh, stuff you go swimming in and like everything you can go swimming in. Some live right by the ocean. It's all surf, surf. It's a little surf town, right? Um, Terry Anderson says Sutter Valley, California looks like a sweet place to build. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you go to the grocery store anywhere in the country and you see their wines just all over the shelf, right? Sutter, Sutter Creek. I mean, it's just, it's the elevation. So a lot of people like that elevation, Sutter Creek elevation. It's like 2000 to 3000 foot. A lot of it's in the 2,500 foot elevation. And that matters because you're not down in the central Valley of California where the, the air s sits more. And you're not way up in the mountains where it gets frigidly cold and you're somewhere in between you get this like Mediterranean climate and so all the properties I've had in there the people that buy them are ones that understand that elevation and they go for that elevation they shop properties based on that elevation and so just the climate and the back side of the valley that kind of elevation just seems to be you know it's just money people love that so hopefully I got it there uh, good morning Louis Krukera says to talk <laughs> that's gonna be on my topic today guys we're gonna talk about TikTok. you guys haven't heard of TikTok? i'm gonna teach you about TikTok this morning uh just because it's i'm i'm totally addicted i'm like a kid in a candy store with this with this toy i'll tell you about it in a sec um bellingham washington checking in nice TikTok. lewis saying TikTok. there we go griffin guten morgen good morning so we get some german going on john jay i need two acres with road access luke hook me up John Jay, we got a bunch of these two-acre properties with road access in northern Florida and Hamilton County, Florida. We got a bunch of them going off there. Um, we've got them on different, multiple different pl platforms. Oh, I'm seeing the notices. We're not getting on uh, Facebook this morning. Here's we got in the <laughs> we got in the penalty box on Facebook. They're saying. Uh, we posted too many properties for sale on Facebook. Oh, speeding ticket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Guys, this is like Craigslist. Trying to sell land, it's drama. Because I got too many properties to sell. So nobody ever believes me. I try to sell all these properties. And they're like, yeah, right. Nobody has that many properties. It's like, come on, guys. <laughs> I buy one. I sell it. I take the money. I buy two more. I sell them. I buy four more. I sell them. I go buy a fancier one and do it all over again, right? And so I get all these properties, and uh, then you try to sell them all. Oh, like, uh, I don't, we should go look on the website right now. I, I think we're over th back over 300 properties. I was dancing a month or two ago when we got it below 300. Let's take a look at how many properties we have for sale on the website. It's a good thing. I shouldn't be sighing. It's so much fun to go present all these properties. People are asking, do you have a property here? Do you have a property there? It's like, yeah, I got one for there. Yeah, I got one for there. So we got 33 pages of properties for sale on ruralvacantland.com. It's 10 per page. The last page, there's uh, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven of them on the last page. So that's uh, 300 and uh, 27 properties up for sale on the website right now. It's all vacant land, almost all of it's vacant land spread across the country, a bunch of different areas. We'll jump into that in a sec. Um, the, uh, yeah, Lewis says, found you on TikTok. Great, yeah, TikTok. We're gonna talk about TikTok, I'm getting there. Angela Larson, anything in Kentucky? Anything in Kentucky, let's pull up Kentucky. So Kentucky, I'm going to throw this over on ruralvacantland.com. So we're on ruralvacantland.com. We're going to go to the first sale. Well, actually, I got an advanced search right here. I should be playing with right over my head. Let's do that. So let's pull it up to uh, location. Let's look for Kentucky. And uh, let's see what we have in Kentucky. Because the properties come and go so fast, I can't keep track of them all, right? So Kentucky, Kentucky, where, how do you spell Kentucky? It starts with a K. Maybe we don't have any Kentucky. We used to have some Kentucky. No Kentucky. Sorry, guys. We don't have any Kentucky. Let's move on to the next one. Good morning, everyone. Johnny Cochran. Facebook jail been there. Yeah, Facebook jail. Me, 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 me. Always telling me off. Like uh, trying to post properties on Craigslist. Like, here you go, Craigslist. Here's uh, here's one or two. Good. The people eat them up and they buy them. Okay, great. Craigslist works. Let's try to sell five of them. Yeah, that's okay. Five of them's okay. 
Okay, let's try to sell 500. No, 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 no. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do. You get people all over the country, all over the world posting for you in different names, different accounts, different phone numbers, routing them every which way. Nobody believes you got that much to sell. Face or uh, Craigslist jail, now Facebook jail. We post too many properties on Facebook. It's okay. YouTube's awesome. You can post unlimited amounts of properties on YouTube. You can post unlimited amounts of properties on TikTok. And so let's, you guys are talking about TikTok. So the last week, let's pull this sucker up. I, uh, so I started a TikTok account. If you guys don't know what TikTok is, like, holy cow. Well, let me get that off the screen. That's my phone. Um, check this out. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. So here's my TikTok account. I put, I may start making these little videos. Let's see if you can see this. I don't know if you can get it on there. Look at that. 1,132 followers in the last week. And if I do the, uh, let's see if I do the analytics, it's crazy on this thing. I got videos that I made yesterday that got like 30,000 views. This is saying, so yesterday, or to, what's today? The 24th? Or yesterday's the 24th. Yeah, yesterday I got, uh, 76,000 views on my videos yesterday. 76,000 views. Like how, how? YouTube, Facebook, like all those other social media, whatever. They don't hold any salt to TikTok. TikTok's crazy. So I started making videos on TikTok about land and about like my escapades and buying and selling land. And it's like wildfire. Whew. It just spreads out to all kinds of people. And if you ever watch uh, social media gurus like Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, whatever his name is, can't spell that name. He, he, he can't even spell it. So he just says Gary V, right? He, uh, he talks about TikTok. He's like, oh, it's all 12 year olds. Yeah, right. <laughs> you just change the hashtags on there to something that's more like adult than what 12 year olds are ever going to look up. And the adults run into the cool stuff like investing in real estate and doing, you know, land deals. My target audience is guys, you know, white guys that are like 55 to 65 years old. My niche is like that. Those are the buyers. Those guys buy probably 95% of my properties. And then there's others. There's other cool people that buy too. I'm not being stereotypical. That's just like, if I look at the statistics of my marketing and what, what's happening, and uh, that's like it's laser sharp of who buys these properties, right? And... Um, so if I direct my targeting towards that audience, I get a better return. But a TikTok, like TikTok's, the base of people on there is generally younger and artsier and creative and comedy having fun, right? Not doing business yet. But ho, 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 I started trying to do business on there. And it's guys, like guys coming back with... You know, they got their plane in the picture and they got their John Deere tractor in the picture and they got the, the deer they just shot in their picture. These are awesome dudes, awesome pictures, awesome lives, having fun, right? The kinds of guys that ought to be buying land out in the countryside and living it up. They're replying to my videos and going for it, asking questions. They're early yet. They're asking questions. They're, they don't trust me, which is understandable. And so I'm answering questions. I'm trying to fill in the details. And uh, over, I think over time, it'll start turning into sales. So we'll see how it goes. So TikTok, if you guys are trying to sell land, you're trying to do land deals, go check out TikTok. That, that thing is that thing is on fire. Like organic reach is crazy. I've never seen anything like it in social media. It's really good. It's really, really good. Okay, so let's keep going. I made like 60 videos or something this weekend, or the, over the last week at least, but I made a ton of them this la yesterday, and they're just slaying it. Um, I can't keep up with the comments. Like on those videos, people asking questions so fast, like my phone just vibrates. It's vibrating so much, I can't even answer the, the question I was trying to look at. And then like five more questions are coming in. Okay. Uh, let me catch up where we're at in these comments. Let's see if I can pop this out. This thing's getting tiny. Sorry, I got like multiple screens here. I should make a video. I'll show you this setup someday. Um, Yasser Lilling says, good morning, Luke. Good morning, Yasser. I made some videos about your properties on TikTok. You should go check them out. Go check out TikTok. You're going to see some of your land on there. Uh, Terry Anderson, have your property with two houses in Arkansas sold yet? Can't find it. Uh, I don't believe so. I didn't check this morning, though. I've been so busy like trying to reply to 
calls and text messages and TikTok messages up the wazoo. I haven't been able to even check and see what people bought yet and update it. Um, I got people calling for mailers I just did. So that's one of the updates I want to do. I sent out some mail last weekend. I sent out some mail the weekend before that. I've been sending out mail like weekly trying to catch up with you guys that I promised I'd send mail out for. And um, I just got some, you know, some of it's starting to get accepted. So if that's your mailer, you're going to start seeing the emails on that. And hope we can go do the happy dance. So next thing you know, I'm going to be raising money to pay for those properties and financing them, shoving them through titles, selling them. Hopefully I go sell them on TikTok and sell them on YouTube, sell them everywhere else. Um, I'm going to send out some more mail. So the next waves of mail I want to send out, I've got a couple real estate agents. I always make fun of real estate agents, guys, but so, there's like one tenth of one percent of them are awesome. And I got this one real estate agent in San Diego that is, uh, I think, one of those awesome guys. He doesn't know anything about land, but I could fill in those gaps. He knows a lot about finance and land. He's been helping me with these buyers that don't have the money for their property to finance it. He's been finding different financial options. Like he just got a guy that's like bankrupt and, um, you know, finances are shot, totally shot, but he's got big cash flow and he got a deal. It was like, a, I think it was $54,000 property. And he got a deal with some bankers. If he puts, if the guy, if the buyer puts down 40%, then, um, uh, they'll, they'll finance the rest. And so that seems to be going. He just got another guy, another buyer wanted some property, San Diego County that I got. And it was like, uh, I think it was $49,000 property. And, uh, he did a deal. The guy could come up with like 5% down. So he's trying to do 5% down guys. I can't do owner financing till I'm blue in the face. Like I can do a little bit, but not his $50,000 properties. Like, come on, I can't, I'm not that much of a banker. So he found these banker guys, it's not even bankers, like private money guys out of, uh, um, uh, Malibu, like Malibu, California, probably some guy working out of his living room doing finance. Right. And, um, he, uh, is willing to do the finance. So he'll do, let me say, let me figure this out. So the finance was the buyer puts down 5%. I hold back 25%. And then the, the banker dude out of Malibu puts up 70%. So 70 plus 25 plus five is hundred percent financing. This real estate agent lined it up, made it happen. It's awesome. The deal didn't end up closing, but he came up with the financing. He found the financing. That was my favorite part of this. And so just deal after deal after deal, he keeps coming up with financing uh, to solve these, these, these properties. And financing vacant land is pretty hard. So he's, you know, I think if I get more properties in his, his, uh, his core area, he can finance the bejesus out of them. So he's teaching me about these different uh, kinds of financings that are going on right now. So in federally um, mandated areas, those are across the country. And then in California, adds um, money on top of the federally mandated areas. The federally mandated areas is a place where like 80% of the population is earning below some threshold of income that basically says you're poor, right? And so they're and in San Diego County, the numbers are crazy nuts. So it's really easy to be below those, those numbers. And so there's a bunch of San Diego, around San Diego that is technically too poor to afford the place. And so the state and the feds are throwing money at it. And so he can take these first time home buyers in some of these areas. He can get 10 grand from the feds and like 70 grand from the state and use that towards the down payment and closing costs of them buying a house. Like they don't even have to come up with any money. And then for developers, it rolls back into like where, what developers can do it, where I come in, you know, so a developer can get money like that too, to develop a vacant property and sell it to first time home buyers, low income people, um, all kinds of different groups because of this specific census area of town. If we buy land in those specific areas, which he mapped out for me, then he can line up the financing for the developers. We can just call up the developers and like tell them how easy it is to finance this land, go build on this thing. Like here's your land, here's the financing, you go build and uh, bang them out. So that takes me into the next the next step of what we're up to. So I've got, I want to do those mailers. If I got time, like 
while my kids and wife are sleeping and you know like uh, i can do some of those mailers <laughs> i'm gonna grind through them and send out some more mail right okay so i'm gonna do that so the the other side of that is what um i've been getting into a lot recently is uh, rei skip guys if you've never checked out this website you gotta check this out and it's pretty new it's only like two weeks old or something and i have no affiliation with them or whatever but uh i just i think they're awesome so i'm gonna tell you about them it's rei skip skip.com rei skip.com and i'm sure like three months ago it would have been this one um batchskiptrace.com. Let's start the story back here. So there's all these like uh, land dealers, how, more house dealers than land dealers. There's a bunch of people that like cold call in to buy houses and they like drive in for dollars and they find the ugly house and they go, they go chase the owner down and try to buy it from them for something stupid cheap and sell it to somebody to fix it up and make a bunch of money, right? It's totally money to be made doing that. But if you go check, target vacant land, like every piece of vacant land out there is is like a, a vacant house or, you know, nobody's working on it. It's just sitting there and there's somebody else that would love it and love to go to work on it. So that, that business is, I think there's a lot more volume in the vacant land business. And uh, I think the spreads are a lot bigger too. And yeah, I'm not going to try to sell you on steel in my business, but you get the idea. So batchskiptrace.com, you could take like a spreadsheet of all kinds of owners information put it in here and you get it back it's like 20 cents a record or if you use some coupons you get it down to like 18 cents a record and one of the big proponent proponents of this website that i watch is brent daniels if you ever ever seen his youtube channel brent daniels his little logo is ttp he's been on the show we had him in the past we did an interview with him i don't know if you guys remember that or i remember that it's just awesome full of energy guy down to earth just a real go-getter it just makes me smile thinking about it he just freaking goes after it and does real estate deals like there's no tomorrow so he uses this website and he shoves data in here and he gets records back of like who the owner of the property is and their phone number and all their contact information stuff so you can chase them down and you're like give me your your property dude you're not using it i'll buy it from you come on come on come on come on, come on. you just chase them down until they sell it to you right well then there's another guy that is uh, out of uh south carolina it's um Max Maxwell and uh, he's got you know he's got like the beard and the sunglasses like his logo and uh, he's just down to earth dude he just uh, goes after these houses in South Carolina and he chases them down he's he picks on mail which is fine I love mail and uh, he likes cold calling and he likes texting and he likes dropping voicemails to buy houses and so he buys houses and sells them buys them sells them buys them sells them so he's also a tech guru dude and he made this website I don't know if he made it or he's involved in it or whatever but he's promoting this website and yeah, here we go. Introducing Max Maxwell's REI Skip 2.0. And so he's in like an old bail bail bondsman guy, and he's like totally into data, like data, 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 data guru, right? And so he got this one together. And so you can go on here, and um, let's see if it just loads in. Um, I think my account's up, but you can pull up you can pull up records one by one. Yeah, welcome Luke Smith. Need to skip trace somebody. I can put, I can just cut and paste the address of the property in there, and I can put their name. Like it's optional, but I, if I got their first name, last name, and stuff, I can put that in there. And what it'll do it'll, is it'll give me their phone numbers, like all their phone numbers, the dates that they've been using these phone numbers. You can see their landlines, their cell lines. You can see their email address. You can see like their next of kin, um, social media kinds of stuff. Like you see all kinds of stuff about these people, right? And then you can start calling them up and chase them down, make it happen. So I think taking the data where it's really easy to go finance vacant land and uh, buying that stuff up and then looking at who else is buying land in that area, especially people that are paying cash. It's an easy way to just shortcut it. Um, you look up the data, who's paying cash for properties and land, skip trace their butt with this website, call them up and be like, hey, dude, I got land in your area. Buy this. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Oh, you don't have any money? I got the financing. Like, here you go. You're building it. Go build some more. Cheapest in the area. Cheap, cheap, cheap. You know, slam the slam the deal home. So I think this is a great deal for on the buy side and on the sell side. But I, I'm a lot more comfortable on the sell side of selling because I don't want to be cold calling people trying to sell them stuff. I just think there's some rules against that. Um, I already get slapped silly sending people mail trying to, trying to buy stuff from them. But selling to them is a different story. Um, so REI skip, that's a fun website. Okay. Let's go back to, let's go back to the, uh, yeah. Um, 
Oh, so one of the stories I got from like a couple days ago with REI Skip, I was playing with it, right? And so the guy got back, he sent a fax back on a mailer we sent out like a year ago. And uh, it's what happens when you send out mail. It's got uh, an infinite lifeline. People put it in their file. Someone dies, they open the file, like, oh, someone wanted to buy the property, we could sell it to them. You know, we don't even have to call a realtor, done. You know, or uh, lifetime changes, someone goes, you know, something happens, they need money, they're, it's just like spring happens and people have garage sales, right? Life events come along and people want to lighten the load and they want to simplify. Maybe they get the tax bill and they're like, ah, I don't pay this stupid tax bill. Luke Smith wanted to buy land from me. I'm like, give him a call, I'll sell the land to him. He's going to have to pay the tax bill. I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll pay the tax bill, I'll pay the tax bill. Just send me the land, you know, because the price I offered is like, ah, way down there. So, um... We get those deals. So that's, uh, so this, okay, this one guy facts back that deal and uh, from like a year ago and I'm looking it up and it's 10 acres, it's looking at the ocean and uh, it's in Northern California. I'm gonna tell you too many details cause, cause I didn't close the deal yet. And uh, I'm like, there's no access. Like how do I get to the access? How do I, how, how do I get there? And I'm zooming in like 3D uh, satellite photos, really good data of the area. And the road, there's like these little roads going through the trees right behind, right by it on one side, right by it on the other is a house next door. So I click on the house and I get the guy's name and number out of REI skip. And I call him up, I'm like, hey, that property is straight east of you. I'm interested in it. And uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get there. Like, how do I get there? <laughs> Can I drive through your property? Are there neighbors that'll let me through? Can I hike back in there? And so he starts telling me all about it. He told me about all the neighbors and all the access routes, the best place to build roads and not build roads, the permits you need to get. Like he had it dialed in because he just built his place there, right? He had to get a permit to get across the stream and the stream he's telling me, it's a really small watershed, but the stream flows year round. And he's telling me about the life that's in the area and the trees and the weather. And he loves hiking and nature and and everything, right? I'm like, yeah, this is really cool. I'm gonna buy this property. There's no access, but I think I'm gonna to talk to the neighbors. I'm gonna see if I haggle out some easements from the way he's telling me. I could probably haggle out an easement in there, and if I can get an easement, I'll buy the property. And so I try to call back the owner and tell him what's going on, do a contract with him that there's no access, but I might be able to solve that problem for him. And and uh, I uh, I accidentally called back the neighbor again. <laughs> Hit the wrong phone number. Yeah, I got the software. Click, 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 and it starts dialing, right? I got the wrong guy. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I meant to call someone else. And he's like, no, it's perfect. I was just about to call you back. I was like looking up your number to call you back. And I talked to my wife and she says we can buy it. I'm like, what? Buy what? This is the property next door. We want to buy it. Let me know how to buy it. I want to buy it. <laughs> I didn't even talk price, right? Neighbor wants to buy the property with no access. So I'm trying to close the deal on the, uh, you know, do, 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 line it all up, make it happen, make everybody happy. So REI Skip, guys, that software is awesome. I'm going to use that a lot more going forward. I think we're going to move a lot more land because of that, solve a lot more problems. In the past, I would hire a picture person to go out there and like take pictures of everything and try to figure out how to get to the property and knock on neighbors' doors, talk to the neighbors. Like it take a month or two to get to the bottom of it. But with this software, it's like the same day I got answers. Like bing, bing, bang, bang, boom, done. Okay. Next, um, on the topics, I was going to talk about uh, calling all neighbors to sell them land. And so what I wanted to do on a lot of these properties that I got, especially some of these Arkansas weird houses I got up for sale, because uh, sometimes the city like bulldozes these things before I get them sold. And people are like, what, I bought a house and there's no house there. I'm like, oh, damn it. The city bulldozed the house. So I want to like call the neighbors and make sure that the houses are still there and uh, get more information about them. Maybe I can get some of the neighbors, maybe I pay them 50 bucks or something to like do some FaceTime or Google Duo or one of those whatever software they're familiar with on their phone. To go take, give me a tour of the house, go walk through the house, give me a nice tour. Like does it have a floor or are there, you know, rat size are there cats that are like are cat sized rats? What I'm trying to say, cat sized rats in there? <laughs> the cockroaches fly at you as soon as you open the door. What is it? What's wrong with the house? Is it all burned out inside? Is it flooded? What's the story? Come on, are they dead? Someone bury their, bury their wife in there? What is it? Like, why is it so abandoned? Let's see if I can get the, the, uh, the DL from the neighbors. I think I'll practice on those stupid little houses in Arkansas and uh, work my way up into some bigger ones. So that's where we're at. Let's hit the comments. 
let's play this game. So today, I'm going to give away another piece of land, and I've told you guys I'm giving land away, and I have given away a bunch in the past, but I'm, my backlog is getting a little backed up and doing the paperwork on the land giveaways. I'm going to catch up on that, but i got so many things going at the same time, it's going to take me a little bit of time, but we'll get it out there. I'm going to give some more land away today. And so here's here's what we're going to do. You go on ruralvacantland.com. It's like the last couple weeks we've been doing this. I've been giving land away for years, but the last couple weeks we've been playing the game different. And so the difference in the game is going to ruralvacantland.com, finding some property and saying, this is your favorite. This is the most economic. This is the best. This is going to be the biggest economic or benefit or life changer to you. Like, why does it matter to you? Tell me a specific property, not just an idea of something out west or whatever, but like a specific property that we can look up and, and dig into and say, you know, this would change my life because I could move from this apartment that I hate in a city that I hate where the weather is awful and I could go to this land over here where the weather is great and the people are nice and there's totally different kinds of food that makes me smile, like warms me up inside with spices and stuff or whatever your story is. And uh, I could build a tiny home. Maybe you've got a passion, like me, I've got a passion for an A-frame because my mom... My mom's dad bought an A-frame in the 50s at a tax auction on Lake Michigan. And I think he paid like $1,500 or something stupid for this A-frame. And they got a whole bunch of beach or the creek. And my family's lived off of that thing ever since. Like they subdivided the, the land. They sold off a bunch of lots on the beach. People built cabins and cottages and stuff back in the 60s, back in the day when my, my grandpa was around. And we still have the cabin. We still have the A-frame. And it's a log one with big stone fireplace in the middle. And it's just right on a beach. A deck rolls out on the beach on the Lake Michigan. It's awesome. I love taking my kids there in the summer. And, um, but, uh, so part of me wants to build an A-frame like that. Something nostalgic about it. But somewhere else, you know, a different part of the world. So I'm always looking at these properties and thinking that'd be fun. So maybe you want to build one of those. Or whatever your dream is, what do you want to build on one of these things? And why is it going to change your life for the better? Like, awesome better is it just economics is it changing your your finances is it killing the bills is it uh setting up assets for your kids is it making rental with incomes are you buying the land and reselling it on financing getting income off of financing land whatever it is tell put it in the comments let's look at it and uh let's uh let's compare maybe we can learn from it maybe we can expand on your ideas and help you along and uh, make them better so that's the idea let's uh look at um yeah johnny cochran facebook jail been there yeah, oh, darn facebook i've never been any good at facebook anyway i'm gonna buy one next month man yeah hiya luke and fellow devoted dirt detectives <laughs> from eowawa morning eowawa need forest thanks for trying morning luke yesterday morning 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 um Terry Anderson. Okay, this is where I left off. Have your property with two houses in Arkansas sold yet? Can't find it. So Terry Anderson, let's pull up the two properties in Arkansas. The properties in Arkansas with two houses. I think I got a couple of them. It's not just one of them, but I think you're looking at the ones, the one I did on YouTube or on TikTok, right? I just made a video yesterday about some on TikTok. So I'm on ruralvacantland.com, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down to Arkansas. So I'm going to go look on here, see if I can figure out where Arkansas is, and I'm going to do for sale. Let's see, for sale. Arkansas for sale. And this is all over my head here. There's an advanced search part of the website. It's on ruralvacantland.com. There's a link back to this website down in the description of this video. If you're watching the recorded version or the live version, look at the description, and there's a link back to ruralvacantland.com. You should be over there trying to figure out what property is going to be the best one for the show anyway. Okay, so it's still on the website, which doesn't mean it's totally for sale. Let's click on it. So it says 1999, two houses. There's two different tax parcels, so ID1 and ID2. So even if you bought two of them and one of them's totally effed up, um, you still got the other one. Uh, so what happens with these sometimes, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, but it's really hard, guys. It is, it's really hard. I don't think people realize how easy it is, or how hard it is in some of these areas. To get to the bottom of these old dumpy houses, um, like what town is this one in? Some of these towns, they don't even answer the phone. Like they're there one day a week or a month or whatever. This is... Uh, uh, Blaithville. Okay, so I got this lady. I got the code enforcement lady. I got her like personal phone number, and she went over and checked out some of these houses for me. I'm trying to get her to check out some more of them, and she's reporting back to me with which ones have um, 
uh, fines on them. So sometimes they have fines. And the ones that have these, these crazy fines, what happens is they got an old dirtbag house like this. And the city thinks they're a blight on the community and they want to get rid of them. And so they eventually, when they have the money, they come in, they bulldoze this thing. And they take it to the dump. And um, if they've done that already, what they do is they take the cost of doing that and they put a lien on the property. And it's not like obvious lien that's like easy to go find. Like in the rest of the country, you could just search on the software they have. It's not. It's just uh, like you got to talk to code enforcement in the town and they write it down in a book or something. Like I don't even think they have computers. So this, I finally got dialed in with a lady there that, uh, that can know that. And that's part of my job this week is getting to the bottom of those. So in the meantime, you could buy one of these things and I'll just refund you if there's liens or if there's problems or whatever. Um, but, uh, so that's, that's the status of these. So these two houses are still for sale. There's one here in the woods. that's really hard to see. There's one that you can see from the side. If we take the, uh, if we take the street view and we jump over to the side, I think there's, oh, I looked the wrong way. There's a water, there's water like right across the street here in the ditch. This road looks like it's got some water damage over time. And the bottom here looks like it's, uh, you know, just the bottom all the way. Looks like it's losing the paint more than the rest of it. I mean, the whole thing's a sh shambles, but the bottom looks like it's gotten wet. And I don't think it's snow here. Like snow doesn't pile up two feet and rot on the, end of the side of the house. So I think it's going to be flood victim. And so you go inside there because look, it goes all the way around just like water would do. I think that house is a flood victim. But looking at the data, I think it's in the 500 year flood zone. So it's not supposed to happen very often looking at uh, looking at FEMA flood maps. You know, so maybe we had already had the 500 year flood and it won't happen again or not. I don't know. But there's houses across the street that didn't, that are going, they're just fine. There's a bunch of houses up and down the street that are going just fine. This one's not. Um, it's just old, right? Maybe it's just not taken care of. Like you just got to go figure it out. So for 2000 bucks, you go in there and go to town on it. It's got natural gas hookup right here on the side. I mean, it's got water, it's got sewer, it's got power. I think the power lines actually cut off of it probably for safety, but I don't think it'd take that much to hook the power line back up to it. So if you drive around the block here, there's another one of them. Looks like the neighbor's got wheelchair access in the front. Let's see if I can drive around the corner. I've never been there, guys. So don't like go there and say, Luke, what'd you sell me? I, this is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm trying to tell you it's crazy. You're buying a crazy house by buying this stuff. But some people make a living buying crazy houses. They look for them, they seek them out, and they love them. And they like to go fix them. Like, dude, chainsaw could do some beautiful work on this thing. All of a sudden, you see the house, you just chainsaw it and take a picture of what the house is. You probably sell it for double what I'm asking. Um, there's an old car stuck in there. I don't know if you get the car or not. But, uh, yeah, these bushes are probably even bigger than when these pictures were taken. Yeah, there's a power line. Looks like the power line was cut off of the house. Looks like you're just hanging on the pole. So still for sale. Thank you for asking. That was Terry Anderson. Uh, Fireside Land. Wow. I saw Savvy Lands talking about TikTok this morning. First I ever heard of it. Yeah, we're going on TikTok all the way, baby. Um, CS in my 50s. Exactly. Backwoods Bungalow. You got my demographic. <laughs> yeah, I got your demographic. That's how it goes. That's who likes vacant land. Um, Johnny Cochran, Luke, this is C Kappa rules in January going to, going to affect you any, I hope not. This Kappa rules in January going to affect you any, I hope not. So this is, this is a child protection act stuff. I think Johnny's talking about, so YouTube's gone crazy. A bunch of people are talking about, uh, all kinds of revenue dropping off their YouTube videos. And I might, I might have this CAPPA thing wrong, but I think this is what he's talking about. I think he's saying that um, like a lot of the educated world out there, it's illegal to advertise to kids, to minors. And like Sweden, where my wife's from, or Iceland, which I visited and had a lot of fun in, and Norway and Germany and I think France and England and a lot of places where people have like 
more than high school degrees generally uh, start coming up with rules and regulations about protecting kids from advertising. They understand that kids can't tell the difference between um, you know, make believe in reality lots of the times. And I see that in my kids. My kids are six and eight and uh, they watch a lot of YouTube. They watch a lot of all kind of crazy stuff. I'm always trying to get them outside and off the TV and away from computers and everything, but every now and then they get on there and they watch just the weirdest stuff ever and they love it, and, but they can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not. So I think we've really got to protect the kids in lots of different ways. So these rules, I don't like rules, but I think, I think someone has got the right idea of coming up with rules about protecting the kids and advertising. And so the way it's spilled down, it's probably not the best way, but when it comes to YouTube creators, especially creators for stuff, content that uh, is targeted towards kids, in my understanding, the advertising on that content cannot be targeted to, toward those kids anymore. It can be generic, like Mattel could make an ad and say, you know, we've got toys, but they can't make an ad and say, we've got this specific toy that goes for this specific kind of kid. And it's the kid that, you know, let's say the toy is an, uh, an ax and it's the kid who likes to watch video games that use axes to cut up animals or something. They're like, oh, we've got the exact same toy that's in this game, and we're going to target that little boy, not the girl, but the boy, and the ones that live in the north because of the weather right now. They're all inside playing this game. And um, if they've watched this video and they've been to this website and they've been over here on the Internet, that's our target audience. Like, that is laser sharp targeted towards that you know, 12-year-old boy that likes to play with the axe on the video game and chop up the kids. Which he probably shouldn't be doing. His parents probably should be looking over his shoulder saying that's not cool stuff. But uh, you know what happens, right? <laughs> and so uh, what happens to the revenue of the YouTube creator that makes content for kids, whether it's for the kid that likes to axe animals or it's for the kid that likes to play with flowers and uh, draw rainbows, whatever the kid's demographic is, they... Um, they make it for kids and it's not for people like older buying land and trading land and stuff. They're making it for kids. They're targeting kids. They've got to say our stuff is targeted for kids and there's a bunch of settings on YouTube now that you can change and edit say it's for kids, it's for kids. And what that does is YouTube stops doing targeted marketing to the people that are saying our stuff's for kids. And so when you see ads come up on your YouTube videos, which there's none on mine because all my ads are all my videos are ads of me advertising land in the first place, right? So I don't want anyone else's ads on my channel. So you don't see any ads on my channel. But uh, and I don't get any money from any ads because I don't let anybody run any ads on my channel. Um, so it doesn't affect me at all, but I think it affects a lot of people that are creating stuff for kids. Their revenue from targeted advertising will go down to just generic, run-of-the-mill, boring, not targeted advertising that people don't like to buy anyway. Okay. Uh, good morning, Vegas here. Yeah, Kurt Butterfield. Does he loan in Michigan? So Kurt Butterfield's asking if my uh, finance guy loans in Michigan. So my finance guy for vacant land, and this guy's awesome. I can get you his phone number and everything. Give me a call. I'll get you his name and number. I don't know if I should just slap it up on here or not without asking him. Um, is uh, he's he's in San Diego and he's a real estate agent. He's a real estate agent and he makes money by doing a commission on the buy and sell of land. So I think I'll indoctrine him into the buy and the sell of land that I'm trying to buy specifically for him to sell and um, with his intel on buying it. I got some other real estate agents that are showing me like where new sewer lines are going in and that changes up the uh, zoning from like this one area it goes from one house per five acres to like, you know, a house every eighth of an acre. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Let me buy those five acres and then watch the sewer line go in like, wow, like values going bananas on that stuff. So real estate agents telling me about those kinds of land plays. I'm going to laser sharp target it. I'm going to go whack them with cash offers, try to buy their land, have that real estate agent on the buy and the sell side and try to run out with uh, with some profits in between. Um, so if they've got cool intel or you guys got cool intel on land plays like that for me, let me know. And we can take it to the bank. We'll split it up one way or another. So back to the question, does he loan in Michigan? He's not a lender. He's a he's an old uh, mortgage broker. So he's done a lot of mortgage brokering in the past. 
And from my understanding is he got wiped out in the 2008 crash and he's been coming around ever since and he's been trying to come back as a real estate agent. Um, and so he's, uh, he's a, just a really hungry go getter real estate agent. Like I got a bunch of people I made offers to that weren't getting back to me that accepted my offers and then they didn't totally get back to me in San Diego County. I, I told him about him and the dude goes over and starts knocking on their doors, like just all over the county, like knocking on doors, chasing these people down, getting me the stories of why they're not going to sell it to me. I felt so sorry for him, you know, cause he's, I thought some of them would turn into deals, but none of them did. They were just, uh, that's, they weren't selling to me because for whatever they found out or figured out or learned later, my prices weren't high enough for them. And, um, yeah, so that he helped me kill a bunch of deals and move on. But I think, doing a new mailer with him in the background, knocking on doors and like paperwork right in people's face the day after they accept it. Like sign here, sign here, you know, you're walking right through it. I think it'd be a cool, cool way of doing it. Um, so does he loan money in Michigan? I'm sure he could find somebody to do Michigan deals, but it's, uh, he specializes in San Diego and he's helping me out in other greater California properties, Oregon, Washington kinds of ones. Some of the same lenders that do San Diego do seem to do the West Coast. But I didn't, I didn't see Michigan on, on the list of properties or are, that some of those lenders were covering. So if you're looking for lenders, another way of doing it is to go to scotsmanguide.com. Let's jump into that website. So I've, uh, let me get out of this double house thing. Now I'm lost. There's a picture of my kid. That's the backdrop. So um, um, pulling up the internet. So this website is uh, Scotsman's Guide, S-C-O-T-S-M-A-N-G-U-I-D-E.com. I might have it wrong. Let's see if that Google fixes my spelling. Scotsmanguide.com. I think that's it. So I'll try to explain it here because there's not a whole, yeah, this is the right one. Oh, they don't like my ad blockers. Why would you complain about my ad blockers? I got ad blockers on for a reason. Of course, I don't want to see your ads. So here is uh, Scotsman Guide. They, this used to be all green. It used to be green everything. They changed to blue. Um, so fund any loan. This is what they say. Fund the right. Find the right lender to fund any residential or commercial mortgage. So what this website does is they don't lend you money, but they. They, they tell you who lends money. And so they've got matrix. Like if you go digging in their website, you'll see these matrix says, okay, I want to finance a golf course. And the golf course is going to have a bunch of residential homes around the side. I'm going to make a bunch of lots and I'm going to build a golf course. I'm going to sell the housing lots and, you know, whatever kind of project you might want to have, right? You can go on here and be like, okay, who funds golf courses? Okay, these people fund golf courses. And then it says, okay, who does golf courses with houses? And um, the uh, I found a few athletic fields near you. Google's trying to look stuff up for me because I'm asking questions. So they they'll show you who will fund golf courses. They'll show you who will fund golf courses with houses. They'll show you who will fund golf courses with houses using um, ten percent down, twenty percent down, thirty percent down. And you're like, okay, do any of them do interest only loans? Because those would be easier payments, right? <laughs> and like, oh, here's the ones that do all this plus interest only loans. And so you can you can go through the matrix of who does what kind of loans that you're looking for and see what kinds of parameters they have. Like, oh, here's one that'll take bad credit. Here's one that rewards really good credit. Here's one that looks for big down payments. Here's one that looks for low down payments with higher interest rates or whatever the the off, the, the ways that those lenders are competitive. They put it in there and lenders... Um, do it. And then they've got postings so you can post and say, I need a loan for something super specific that you're trying to do, right? And uh, people, the other brokers will get back to you and say, I could broker that. And then lenders will get back to you and say, oh, I can do that. And um, this website has a lot of that. So I'm not affiliated with this website. I don't make any money off of them. I don't work with them. They're just, just a good, inf good source of information for finding money on whatever kinds of real estate deals you might be into. So keep that one in your pocket for the future if you're looking for, like Kurt Butterfield's looking for loans in Michigan. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to I'll pull my website up in the background and throw my face up here. Guys, did I tell you what this is in the background here? I didn't tell you about this. This property in the background is uh, a deal I just got accepted this morning before I started the live call. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's boats back there. You guys know how much I love boats? Look at that. And that's salt water too saltwater boats 
saltwater boats, houses, houses, houses. There's utilities. Like, look over here. I can't reach that far. There's a phone. All the utilities are right there. There's paved street. Like, right behind me, it's like I'm sitting in the paved street. I'm so proud of this property in the background. It's from a mailer I sent out last weekend. And uh, as soon as we're done with this call, I'm going to go try to close on this thing. I'm going to buy it. As soon as I get it sold, bought, I'm going to put it up for sale. I'll put it on YouTube. I'll put it on my website. I'll put it on TikTok. I'll put it all over the place. Probably find someone in the area. I think I got a deal for uh, $71,000 to buy this thing. Seventy-one, one twenty-seven, thirty-seven, or some crazy price like that, right? I don't throw out round numbers. I throw crazy numbers at people so they think I know what I'm doing. And then... Um, which I don't. I just throw it at the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> and so he's going to sell me this property. And then I think the market in the area is like 200, maybe 250. So now you guys see my advertising on it. You know what I paid for it. You guys can school me on what you buy it for. But I'll probably sell it to, I don't know, maybe I'll call that guy or I'll call that guy and say, your brother should live next door. I got the land right here way under the market, way cheaper than you got yours. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Ann. I see this one going by where I'm looking, I'm looking at, trying to figure out where I am in the comments. I see Ann saying happy Thanksgiving. That's cool, it's coming right up. My kids only have two days of school this week. I'm gonna cry. I love hanging out with my kids, but I got so much to do. Ah, uh, the two days of school. Like, come on, they, why can't they go on Wednesday too? Wednesday, Friday, whatever happened to that? Um, <laughs> CS says almost bought three acres, but realtors lied and manipulated, so I bolted. <laughs> That's that happens all the time, guys. Uh, the Andrew W. Opportunity zones. We should target a mailer to them. Andrew W. Oh, he's talking opportunity zones. That's what I'm talking about too. But opportunity zones layered with a finance guy that can finance them and tells you exactly how to finance them and which ones are more opportune to financing than others and not just the houses he's telling me about the shop so like the commercial properties in the area you want to build a muffler shop or you want to build an oil chain shop or you want to build a mcdonald's you want to build a whatever on these commercial ones like along the main streets in there he can do the financing on that and he was taking me through the crazy easy financing on those too it's like holy cow I can't believe those properties are still vacant. Like we've got to grab them up and tell people how easy it is to finance them. So I'm going to merge those things together. Um, CS, love this. And I'm learning so much. Jessica O'Reilly, yeah. Jessica, I was just uh, doing a deed for you. It took me a little while to get that one out, but it's a corrective deed. I did a corrective deed, and I this last week I got it signed and mailed, and it's going through the county. You're going to get that deed pretty soon, Jessica. You'll get it back here. It's had your name on it. I'm just seeing your name and remembering that deed. How much is REI skip? Oh yeah, I missed that part. So Fireside Land says, how much is REI skip? So that's the beauty of it, guys. You can go play with it for $1.50 and you get 10 records for $1.50. That's uh, 15 cents a record. You could put a lot more money in there than, you, than that if you want to front load it with money and then do them one by one if you're looking at them one by one. Or let's say you're doing a mailer and you're mailing out a bunch of offers you're going to go mail the whole state of California. Everybody that's got vacant land, you say, I'm crazy like Luke. I'm going to mail them all, right? That'd be a big mail. I've never mailed one that big, but I've mailed the whole states of other states. California, it's a little harder to mail the whole state. I've mailed half the state, half back side of California, like the, the eastern half. I'll mail that whole thing at once, but not the whole state of California. I don't have those balls big enough yet, but we'll see. So um, let's say you're going to go mail the whole state of California is my example. <laughs> I don't know how many records that would be. I should pull it up and look. You have to pull them like county by county. <laughs> Just laughing because there'll be so many phone calls. Oh, you can put that in the REI skip and they'll tell you how many properties of that that they actually have the phone numbers to. And so if you're doing vacant land, it's probably not as many as houses, but with vacant land, I mean, with the houses and stuff, they're, they're, other people I'm talking to, they're saying like 80% of them are coming back. Or some of the guys that just pulled some vacant land ones I talked to are saying 80%. Like uh, Trevor, if you're watching, Trevor was just saying he did a list for probably like 800 or 1,000 records, not very many. And um, it was like 80% of them came back with phone numbers. Now, how many of them are really good, accurate phone numbers? I don't know. But REI Skip brags about being the most accurate and really, really accurate data. And the records that I've pulled, people have been answering the phone. 
like they answer the phone or they call me back. So I think their records are pretty accurate. I haven't done that many records, but I think they are. So you could put that whole list in there. Let's say you did all of California, shove the whole of California list in there, and then you could get you could get like some uh, phone dialing software. <laughs> I'm laughing because I want to do this, guys. I'm just excited. I think it would be a lot of fun. If I had some more time, I would strap myself into the seat and start dialing for vacant land. And you can start dialing. It's like, oh, I just sent you a letter. Yep, here's your, your offer's in the mail. I just want to call and wonder if you're willing to sell your land. I want to, you know, if you're, you've got, you know, want to sell that land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sell that land. Here's how much I'm offering. <laughs> you know, get ready to duck every time. Maybe you don't want to wear a headset. You want to have a handset. You can, like, hold away from the ear when they yell at you. But, uh, or a button you could volume up and down with your fingers. I don't know. Got to figure it out. But you could go call everybody in California and say, I want to buy your land. I want to buy your land. I want to buy your land. You're going to get deals. You're going to get so overwhelmed with good deals. You're not going to be able to breathe. That's just the way it is. So 15 cents a record at volume. You could buy the whole state if you wanted to at 15 cents a record. You just got to be crazy enough to like make that many phone calls. So maybe you start with a neighborhood or like all the water, all the how, all the vacant land on this water or something like that. Uh, hope everyone has happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I love the tax bill dance. <laughs> the tax bills are awesome, guys. Everyone hates tax bills. I'm a land dealer. I love tax bills. Tax bills come in and people are like, oh, I got to keep my language clean here. You know, but they say a bunch of bad words you're not supposed to say in public. And then... Uh, I, I hate paying tax bills. I really, really, really hate paying tax bills myself. I usually just kick them down the road until somebody buys the property and then I pay the tax bill off with their money. That's just the way I like to do it. But uh, you can do it however you want. Um, but people want to sell the land when they get the tax bill. Even if the tax bill is $4 a year, they still want to sell the land because they don't want to pay that $4 a year. they got to write a check and they got to keep track of it and everything. Just people don't like it. Um, hello, Luke. Do you have Black Friday deals for land on rural vacant land? Oh, that's a good question. I haven't thought about that. I should come up with some, huh? You guys should tell me some examples of what kind of deals I should have. I mean, I'm, I got Black Friday sales on rural vacant land every day. Every day is Black Friday on rural vacant land. Um, yeah, here we go. Will Blast. Luke's prices are Black Friday prices every day. Yep, Adam Mixa. I'm late, but I made it. Good morning, Adam. Jeffrey Day. Good morning, Luke. When... That Palmer Mountain land with a cabin sells. I can't wait to grab a lot up north and start living the dream. Back to framing and drywall here. All very best, Luke. Yeah, Jeffrey Day. Hopefully it's cool for me to say this, Jeffrey. Jeffrey paid for the mailer that came in with a cabin on Palmer Mountain. And Jeff, you know what's happening this weekend? We got uh, this snowstorm coming. So we're supposed to, we're in San Diego County, right? It's We just had the first rain a day or two ago. Uh, since we've had in since the previous rain was May, and so it's dry all summer, it rains in the winter, it's winter time, it starts raining. Uh, so we got four inches of rain down by the coast, it's supposed to be four inches up in the mountains, it's probably be more. And it, it's supposed to snow down to 2,000 foot, and that's a pretty low snow level for around here. I mean, my elevation here is maybe a hundred foot off the water, but uh, so we're not going to get snow, we're going to get rain, but. That cabin up in the mountains, in the mountains behind me, is uh, it's at 5,600 feet or 5,500 feet. It's, it's over 5,000 foot. It's going to snow. This is a time to go up there and go sledding. My wife was talking about taking the kids up there this weekend, go sledding after the snow comes down. And uh, she's like, maybe we could go check out that cabin, go sledding up there. I'm like, hell yeah. She's, my wife's like, why don't you have signs out? You got to have signs out there because the whole San Diego is going to be up there this weekend going sledding. I'm like, I know, I got to do something. And maybe I should give them a, give them hot chocolate or something. <laughs> Come take a tour, get some hot chocolate. I don't know. I got a realtor that does tours up there like every weekend. He's the guy. He's been showing the place and just keep us keep throwing buyers at the wall and see if one sticks. Right, got to find the right one. Uh, KC, I want a property near Los Angeles where I can park an RV and drive into work. Yeah, where I can park an RV and drive into work. How long are you willing to drive, man? Like, Los Angeles, you got to drive from anywhere, I guess. But uh, I got some on the backside, like an hour or two hours drive. Um, but as you start getting closer into LA, the prices go up more, a lot more. And, um, you know, there's a website, there's a land dealer who used to post land on realvacantland.com and he got too cheap to keep paying for it but he's still a pretty cool dude is uh 
uh, Willie Goldberg, his, his website is WG, WGLands.com. So if you go look up WGLands.com, the guy specializes in land on the backside of LA, like just on the backside of LA. He keeps buying them and selling them, buying them and selling them all day long and just focusing on that one little area. So if that's where you're looking for land, he's probably got the better deals really close to town in that area, a little bit further out of town. I got a 20 acres for, I think it's like 5,000 bucks on the website. Um, but his are going to be like 20 to 50 or 100,000 just on the back side of town. Uh, Capri Crescent. Hi, Luke. I'm a non-U.S. citizen. Can I purchase a property in the U.S.? Of course you can, Capri. Anybody can buy land in the U.S. As long as you're not moving the money through like North Korea or, you know, the Boko Haram crazies in the backside of Nigeria or something, uh, you can buy land in the U.S. So anybody can buy land in the U.S. It's just like some places the money is not accepted to move through. Um, then the thing you got to worry about is uh, taxes. So you buy this land in the U.S. We we're just talking about taxes. Land in the U.S. has tax bills. And it was started when people moved over from Europe and they said, to hell with you guys and all your crazy land holdings because they had these, these families that own all the land, right? And so the farmer works on the land and they pay taxes for working the land. They don't even own the land. And they said, forget it. I'm out of here. I'm going to the U.S. And so they went to the U.S. And when we set up the U.S., they said, not going to have it. Not going to have these big land barons that own everything and then just have us as sharecroppers and got us by the short and curlies all our life to make us do what we want to do. Not going to be under those, those rules again. So they, they said, we're not taxing the people. We're taxing the land. And so the U.S. does this, Canada does this, Australia does it, New Zealand, maybe some other places, but most places in the world don't. They tax the people. They don't tax the land. The U.S. was set up by taxing the land, not the people. And what that does is it creates more turnover in the land. It makes more opportunity for us to be able to go buy land. And the other thing they said is we're going to publish whoever owns the land. We're going to say who it is, how much they paid for it. All that information is going to be public. It's not going to be private anymore. We, so if there's land sitting around, nobody's using it, the other thing you can do is you can go over there and you can set up shop and you can start living on it. And if nobody kicks you off, you can keep it. And there's different rules in different parts of the U.S. for how long and how to go about that. But the U.S. is different in that way. So it's got these wide open rules to get this land turning and churning and making it happen. So if you buy land in the U.S., you got to pay tax on it. And so some of these properties in like New York or Illinois are crazy taxes. And other places like northern Arizona are, you know, less than stopping by and getting a coffee in the morning. You know, that's their tax a year. So, but you still have to pay it. And if you don't pay that tax, they'll take the land away from you and sell it to someone like me. Or other land dealers or whoever, right? And uh, we'll go market that stuff and find somebody else who wants to use it. And... That's the beauty of America. Keep it turning until somebody starts using that land. And then when they improve on it, make it better, the locals can charge more taxes because it's the land's worth more and the local government becomes more prosperous and everybody wins. But you gotta pay the tax on the land. So if you're from overseas, you probably don't have a bank account in the US with these little paper check things like dinosaurs would use. Um, you probably used to like paying bills electronically like most of the rest of the modern world does. But in the U.S., we've got um, subsidies like called the U.S. Fed that moves money around between all banks and stuff for free. They don't charge anything to do it. And so we still use checks because they're free. And so we write this little piece of paper and it's like, I'm going to give you money. And it's got your bank and account information on there. You give it to the county. And the county cashes that thing in and the banks that do their dance and they move the money between the Fed every day and it gets into their account. And so if you're going to pay for it, you're going to pay with like a Visa card or a debit card or a you know, MasterCard or something, not with a, with a piece of paper. And they're going to charge you a fee because those money processing companies charge you fees. So they'll charge you fees. So just go make sure that the county that you're buying that land in actually accepts credit cards or debit cards because some of them don't. And um, you're going to have a hard time paying the bill if you don't have an American bank account with American old school checks to pay it with. And no, I'm not going to like process your money to pay the bill, the taxes for you. I got people asking me that a lot. That's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, Will Blast, property located near Parker, Arizona, California. Okay. So I think Will Blast is trying to tell us about a property that's going to be like the awesome one for the show. Maybe I'll give him a piece of land. Let's see if this is it. Will Blast. Property located near Parker, Arizona, California border. 
only 1200 bucks would allow me to move towards no rent life which would change my entire life can put a modular manufacturer mobile nice okay let's figure out where parker arizona is i should know where that is right i'm supposed to be the map guy let's figure out where parker arizona is um and then from there maybe i can figure out what property it is big river parker La Paz County. I don't know if we have any land down there for sale anymore. Um, I've had some down here in the past. La Paz County always has some taxes. There's Fidel Junction, Parker. This is not La Paz County. This is this is Yuma County. No, this is Mojave County. Okay, so Mojave County. This is Mojave County, Arizona. So let's pull this up. Oh, I didn't I didn't have the right thing on the screen. I was just looking at some maps. Okay, so I'm gonna go to well, let's pull up locations. Website's running kind of slow. So on ruralvacantland.com, oh, it's because I hit too many buttons. So on ruralvacantland.com, we're going to look up Mojave County, and hopefully I got this right. I believe believe Parker is right on the river, Mojave County. I'm going to look up stuff for sale. And uh, the other way I'm going to look it up, I'm going to pull it up. Oh, we don't have anything. I'm wondering if he's looking at a property that's already sold. Because I've had some there in the past. It's pretty cheap ones in the past. They, I think they're all sold out. Guys, if you're a land dealer, if you're aspiring to be a land dealer, a land trader and everything, Mojave County is one of those counties that like some of the other land dealers are saying it's like one of their magic counties. You can almost always mail offers there. You can almost always buy land. You can almost always sell it. It's just you can buy it and you sell it and you buy it and sell it. And you can do it in volume. It's one of those counties that's just crazy like that. I don't think the spreads are as big as some of the places. I think as you get more unique properties, you can get bigger spreads. So I've targeted bigger spreads. But I think the land he's talking about would be in this area. Um, and I, I can't find it. So I'm, I'm sorry, Will Blast. Maybe you can uh, come in and tell me more about this specific land. If I can't find the one that you're talking about. That sounds good, Will Blast. That's where they all. That's where they have the van build. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. So there's a YouTube guy that does these van builds there. Um, I talked to him about land. He was trying to buy some land off me. And we never ended up closing the deal, but... Talk to him a bunch. He's trying to find a property where he could have like a couple thousand people show up and work on their off road vans and living camping vans and um, have workshops and everything. He was asking if he could rent land. I'm like, ah, that's a lot of people and a lot of liability. <laughs> where are they all going to go poo? It's going to leave a mess. So I don't think the local regulations love to have them on their land or I don't really like to have them. I'm told I'll sell them land. He can go deal with it, but that's, that's a lot of liability. Um, Adam Mixel says, love these Arkansas properties. Will Blast, KC, yes, indeed, yeah. Um, Adam, I have Everm, I have uh, Everm Arkansas parcels available. Cheap, if you want them, let me know. Nice, several. Yeah, several. We got Arkansas coming out our ears, guys. This is the kind of property I need. Yep, Will Blast. The properties near Memphis are high on my list as well. No one wants to live near Memphis, LOL, but I'd like to have those lands. Their land, guys. Like, would you rather pay more money or put up with some stupid neighbors? Like, stupid neighbors a lot cheaper. You could put your money into other things. You can put your money into a lot of other things than paying for location. It just takes the right person. We got technology coming on our ears. It's getting better every day. Like, look at all this technology advances I was just talking about in this one show from this last week. Like, it's just technology is tearing it up right now. And it makes us... It, be able to use so much more of this land and live in so many more places get get our food delivered get our products delivered get our message out get our get our uh, skills jobs whatever we have to offer out to the world in so much more better ways other ways than we've ever had before okay so i got different messages popping up here um my idea the this one and the next one, home delivery okay, <laughs> and land across the street, 699 into the road land, make a homestead for my granddaughter to raise ducks and rabbits. I want to try to buy the two adjoining lots too. Van, you help? Yeah. 
So this is Oopsie. Oopsie's saying, this is his idea. He wants the home delivery okay one. So let's try to figure that out, property out. I think that's Union County, if I remember right. Um, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the search and I'm gonna say home delivery okay. Hopefully I spelled it right. Got a lot of home delivery okay. Uh, I wonder if that was the name of the video and not the name of the property. But I think it's Union. I think he's talking about these ones in Union County, like in, um, or maybe it was Chico County. I'm kind of thinking Chico County, Arkansas. Let's see. Chico for sale. I think it's down this street. Yeah. So I think this might be one of the ones he's talking about because the neighbor's got this awesome looking garden. I think these are the two lots, so two lots, and I got two lots and one checkout. So it's two different APNs and I'm asking $12.99. There's also a lot across the street. There's a couple lots that I don't know who they belong to. And then there's one down here. It's a good sized lot just uh, in the, the bush and woods and stuff over here. So theoretically, I mean, you could group them all together if you wanted. There's a power line like right here. There's a tractor on the lot. There's an old rusted out tractor. My uncle would probably go for that. I mean, he loves taking apart tractors and selling the pieces on eBay. The guy's crazy. He sells tractor parts on eBay. I shouldn't say he does right now. He passed on. He passed on um, two years ago. But my uncle Brian was a big influence on my life. <laughs> and he, he, uh, he's, he was born with um, kind of one side of his face and one arm and one lung and one, you know, like one, one side of him wasn't totally there when he was born, right? And uh, so he had, he had a hard time um, seeing and hearing and everything. He had a hard time with a lot of stuff. And, uh, but he had the, the warmest heart ever and he loved auctions. So I used to go to auctions with him as a kid, right? And he'd go to these auctions, middle of nowhere, Michigan, Southern Michigan. He would buy these properties and he'd put cows on them. And he put, he'd drive between multiple different properties. Like he'd drive all night going to check on the cows at different properties. And uh, so he, he loved his cattle. And then when I was even younger than that, he had uh, milk cows. He used to get up the butt crack of dawn to go milk the cows. And he did that. He had a horseback riding arena, you know, it was for like kids to ride ponies around in circles and stuff. And then later on, he bought this property. He bought this property. I don't know where he got it. It's probably some auction somewhere, right? he loved auctions and it had a pond and it was overgrown like crazy but he's like there's a pond on it you know so he bought this land with a pond and it's a christmas tree farm a bunch of overgrown christmas trees and uh he cut it up and he he, he built a couple housing pads along the street and he got he found these mobile homes like some old mobile homes probably at some other auctions and he figured out how to get a move to the property and he had me helping him dig and work on it lots of different ways when I was around. Like I remember trying to figure out septic. <laughs> I was probably elementary school, but he just gives me the shovel, you know, cause he's easily got one real arm that works that well. It's like, you're digging. <laughs> I remember he'd be like dumping water in the hole and timing how long it takes for the water to go down to see if we can put septic there or not. Like those kinds of things, right? get the power lines hooked up, renting them out. He would rent these uh, trailers out, get some crazy renters, but uh, he, clean, he loved to collect tractors. He'd buy tractors, he'd tear them apart. John Deere, only John Deere. He had like John Deere collectibles all over his place and all the John Deere toys. I was never allowed to touch them. They were like collectibles, right? But he'd take these John Deeres apart and he'd sell them. He had no way to really sell them. He'd put them in the newspaper and stuff. And I showed him eBay because I was selling stuff on eBay. So like, Brian, got to try eBay. You got to yell at him because he can't hear. And he's like, what? I'm like, it's, a, it's an auction. It's on the internet. You can do an auction from home 24-7. He's like, nah. <laughs> so we got internet hooked up at his place. He's probably the first one in the county to get internet. <laughs> no. I started showing him eBay. It took me a couple of weeks of showing him. He started, we started figuring out how to get pictures. We didn't even have pictures, you know? He can't spell. He'd, he'd write these awful ads in all caps. Like back in the day, everything was in caps if you're trying to say it. 
with passion. You put it in caps like spam. And he'd, he'd sell these parts. And he'd explain what they are and he'd sell them. And people would drive from like Pennsylvania to middle of nowhere, Michigan to buy these tractor parts, these specialized tractor parts. And he'd buy them for like, you know, the weight of the metal. And he, he would sell them for you know, like $1,200 or whatever. Like this part is needed to fix the guy's special tractor. That one part, whatever that part was, but he'd take the whole tractor part and he'd explain every single part of that tractor on eBay and he'd put them all up there and he'd sell them all. And he had the loyalist following of buyers. It was beautiful. Like the guy was great. It was cool. Every time I was at his house, people were fixing their cars because he had all the tools. They'd come over to his, his shop. He had all the tools to like take the engine out and whatever, if you need to fix your car, he's got all the tools and you can do it right there. And so all the people in the neighborhood would come fix their their whatever in his shop. And his payment was you gotta make food. So the wife or the kids or whoever would be in the house making food. And they'd make food for me, they'd make food for my uncle Brian because he hated cooking. And they, he had a bunch of Tupperware and stuff and they'd put it in the Tupperware packages and load up his fridge and load up the freezer. People would bring deer, they'd bring um, uh, lots of pigs and goats and chickens and ducks and fish, like all kinds of whatever they caught or shot in the area or hit with their car. And we'd dress them out in the barn. I mean, we'd clean all kinds of animals, make sausages, grind them up, whatever. He had a bunch of freezers. He'd fill all those freezers and he was always giving food away to all the people in need in the area too. So he had the food processing in the area and the tools and his house was like Grand Central Station for food and for fixing cars. And it was always the funnest thing ever to go visit my Uncle Brian for that. And so I'm very grateful to him. If you're ever out there listening to this somehow, <laughs> go out, Uncle Brian. Let's talk about some of these properties. Like my Uncle Brian would take this property and he'd go put some mobile homes on it. He'd go on modern day Craigslist and find some mobile homes, move them over here and change people's lives by putting those mobile homes on there and renting it out to them for not much money. The ingenuity to put it all together and make it happen. You could get a revenue stream that changes someone's life. Like they're so happy on the other end to rent that thing and go for it. So, uh, oopsie, talking about doing it for yourself. That, that, that's really cool. $699. So $699 one is the one on the other side of the street. And then those asking $1299, I think for these two on this side, you could put mobiles on all of them. Um, so let's let's start with Oopsie. Talking about six ninety nine, house delivery okay. See to me like big big financial wins on these properties is awesome, and that means a lot, and that's like the win, the win, the win, right? But down to earth, life changing wins like a property like this, like what my uncle Brian would do, like viewer oopsie is talking about doing changing his life or his kids lives going from a big mortgage a big rent someplace to something like this where you can own it and you can take pride of ownership and you can make it happen i think can be even more impounding than making like a hundred thousand dollars and one just buying and selling a piece of real estate like it's that life-changing thing is i don't know i'm gonna try to keep myself from crying because it means a lot to me in lots of ways um, so Anne, uh, to have a piece of property on wooded land would be so awesome because it would have me moving towards self-sufficiency that I could live off the land and build a tiny home on it and try to go green. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. And that's the dream. That's, that's what land is all about. It's a dream and, uh, it's a solution to lots of people's problems and having the nerve to go after that solution is the hardest part. Like I'm preaching this stuff. And I know 99% of you will never do it and never listen and never follow through. But it's that 1% or maybe it's that one tenth of 1% of you guys that get up off the couch and it's like, put that couch out on the corner with a free sign on it. Get rid of that stupid thing and start working on moving forward and changing your life to just make it better. Whether it's taking a piece of land and fixing it up or buying a stupid piece of land for $600, $700, whatever this last one was and offer it up for sale. Go offer it for $100 a month. Go put it on Craigslist. You're not gonna get kicked off Craigslist if you post one property. Go put it on there and offer it up. People will start asking you about it. You can answer questions from my videos and the information I give you on it. And they're like, what, what, how, how, where, where? And you just answer the questions 
before you know it, somebody's gonna be buying that property from you, crying happy, so happy to buy it from you for $100 a month. And don't charge them $600 or $700 like you just paid for it. Charge them like 25 months, you know, two, three, four times what you just bought it for. Because you're taking the risk and you're taking the initiative to go do it. Use your mind to make money instead of using your labor. Stop trading your time to make money. Start using your intellect to create capital. And that is a mantra I've had for a while and hopefully I can be more of myself going forward. And hopefully I can instill that in some of you. So you could take these things, these are tools, they're assets that can be used to do that. You do that with one property and it's not about the $2,000 you make, it's about the idea, the light bulb that goes off in your head that now you can do it on two of them. Next time you can buy three, or you can buy five, you can buy 10. You can buy the like this one in the water in the background. That's what I'm working on right now. Let's do some waterfront, oceanfront stuff, let's do it. Yeah, I sell it on terms, I sell it for $2,000 a month or something, I don't know. This is, give me $75,000 down and $2,000 a month for the next five years. You know, I get my money back out of the down payment and I get some money per month for a while going forward and it's still cheaper than what everyone else is paying in the area. Like those kinds of deals where everybody wins, right? Um, Milky Cap. Okay, YouTube was collecting data on kids, not the creators. Exactly, yeah. YouTube's collecting data on kids, whether they know it's kids or not. And um, a part of that is wrong. Like, you should be asking people if it's okay to collect their data. And so I think the social media networks are getting held more accountable, and YouTube's one of the biggest ones. So that's that's what we're talking about, the rules changing. I'm 18. I want to buy a property. Is that possible? Yeah. Want to move down south to Florida or some cool property with water view? Hell yeah. So MC with a thumbs up and a smiley face in between. Dude, you don't even have to be 18 to buy land. Like, you could have a, you could be thinking about having a kid someday. You're 18, hopefully you don't have kids yet. If you do, that's cool, but hopefully you don't. If, you know, let's say you want to name your kid. Let's say your last name is MC. Let's say you want to name him John MC. You could buy land in the name of John MC now, and maybe you don't have that kid until for like 20 more years, right? Well, hopefully you keep up the taxes and stuff in the meantime. But when that kid eventually turns, you have that kid, and he turns 18, then you could sell it. But the problem with deeding land a name that doesn't exist yet, or is not 18 yet, is they can't sell it, they can't transfer it. That's where the problem comes in. So in land, you don't have to sign anything to buy it. You just sign to sell it. It's a grant, you know, like a deed. It says, I, Luke Smith, am granting to, you know, Mr. MC, or whatever your name is, legal description, blah, 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 this lot over here by the ocean, lot number seven on the street, whatever the legal description is, in county this, of state that, USA, principal, prime, meridian, all the whole legal description describing the thing. Get it recorded, it's transferred. You don't even have to get it recorded to transfer it. Recording is just a formality. A lot of people don't understand that either. But we'll save that for another day. So you could totally buy land at 18. You could buy it online. You could buy it on ruralvacantland.com. You could use a credit card, debit card. I mean, you could mail cash through the mail if that's what you really want to do. Um, I don't know if I have many on the water yet. I'm working on it. I'll talk about that when it happens. There's I got a deal this last week to work on a lot of a lot more waterfront properties. It should be a lot of fun. You're going to see them coming. I can't wait. Okay, Brenda, I can't believe I finally figured out how to get in on the live show. I'm new to Rural Vacant Land. Thank you, Brenda Porter. Thanks for showing up. Welcome. We do this every Monday morning. KC, that's true, Mill Cap. It's all about censorship to our First Amendment rights. YouTube doesn't give a crap about the kids. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Yep, 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 yep. Calamity Rain. Good morning, Luke. I'm not your father. <laughs> That's good. I know my father. And oh, I'm losing my place on here. I'm going to try to catch up, guys. Um, uh... I could figure out where I was in the comments. Thanks so much for all these comments, guys. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a hard time keeping up. I might have to skip through if I'm gonna ever gonna end this thing. We're already an hour and a half in. Um, 
and says, I just want to go green, use reclaimed materials and be there, be there on that land or tire on. That's what, <laughs> yeah, Brenda, I'm with you, Ann. I want nothing more to do with guys going back. I have one acre property in Holbrook, Arizona that I would like to trade for land in northern Arkansas. Okay, uh, oopsie, if you could email me, Luke, at ruralvacantland.com, what you're, what you're proposing to trade, I might, maybe we could figure it out. Let me Just let me know. KC, me too, and yeah, this message is held for review. Calamity Rain, I shared your link. I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, that. Calamity Rain says, I shared your link with my daughter and brother and nephew in Oregon. Thank you for all the great deals. Thank you, Calamity. Oopsie says, if... You don't want ads. Use the Brave browser. It blocks all ads. Nice. What browser is that? Brave browser? I'll have to check that one out. There's one that I always like was DuckDuckGo. I use that one sometimes to block out tracking, but they still advertise. Brave browser sounds good. Um, Kurt Butterfield. Thank you, Luke. Thanks, Kurt. And I also want to build a tiny home on the free property given to me. There you go. I'm behind guys, like I'm probably a little over a month behind on the free land that I've been giving away. And I got a bunch of them returned and rejected. I got to reprocess those too. So the free land, we're, we're kind of on a, you know, I need the plumber to get the deals flowing again on there. I just need the time to process the paperwork. I've been trying to, I got some other goofy deeds and um, I mean, things that title shops did, I still got to fix on land deals I'm into. I've been fixing it. I've been just Mr. Fix it all week long. I was thinking about buying a shirt that says, you know, all these YouTubers got these shirts that say things. I think mine should say, I fix problems. Because <laughs> that's what I feel like I'm doing all the time. Um, Jessica says, I got the message from your assistant. Thanks. Cool. And I'm learning so much by watching your show. It's good. Brenda, do you ever have land in Ohio? I dream of living in Arizona again, but my kids, our grandkids live in Ohio. Um, let's check out Ohio. Let's, uh, I don't think we have any in Ohio right now. So back to, um, let me pull it up on this screen. So I'm trying to pull up the Ohio. I don't think we have any Ohio. And here's why I don't think we have an Ohio. A lot of Ohio land is very, uh, very generic land. It's farmland. I'm just talking broad. It's not all that way, but generally, very, very generally broad speaking. Um, it's very, uh, commonly priced, if you will. So it's more hom homogeneously priced. And so when it's when an asset is more homogeneously priced, like let's say corn, you wanna go buy corn. Are you buying organic corn or non-GMO corn or just corn corn? Maybe there's like three prices, I don't know. It's this, this, this. Everybody knows what the price of corn is. Maybe there's a little differential for trucking from point A to point B if you live further out in the middle of nowhere. But it's basically the price is that, right? And so when you go to sell your corn, you know what you're going to sell it for. When you go to buy corn, you know what you're going to buy it for. So land, when it's like that kind of land pricing, there's no room for me to go buy it at crazy low prices and sell it at crazy middle prices in between what other people are trading for and my buy it prices. It's because there's just no room. Like, there's no room. It doesn't make any sense. So a lot of the farmland, to me, just doesn't make sense, and I don't get into it. But with that said, we do have one in uh, Tuscarawas County, Ohio. Which I've never heard of. Let's see who has this one. Ben Dow. Okay, Ben's got some land in Ohio. Look at that. It's got a hill. 12,000 bucks. 1.73 acres. He's got uh, he's got videos. Looks like it looks like uh, him talking video and then like he's got um, drone videos flying over it. It's a kind of a weird shaped lot. Looks like there's a road coming up here. I'm sure he's describing it in these videos. Looks like there's a road over here. Looks like a big golf ball. It's probably a water tower. There's a river. So it's between a river and a road and there's a neighborhood and um, you're gonna have to go study this land. So if you go to ruralvacantland.com, I've never seen this one before and um, I haven't studied it. Looks like there might be a hill back in there. There's a bunch of trees. I mean, it looks beautiful, nice and green. Yeah, you're just going to have to go figure it out. It's on ruralvacantland.com. Talk to Ben. He owns the land. He'll tell you all about it, what the deal is and everything. Looks like the road. Yeah, the road goes right up to it, legal legal wise. Yeah, the road goes right there to it, so you can drive right up to it. Just extend the driveway out. Yeah, there's a, there's a hill there. Just go look at it and see how much of a hill it is or not. That's pretty neat. So we got some land in Ohio. Um... 
Hire me to help you. I'm in Los Angeles. Here we go. I'll work on commission. <laughs> KC, you want to do some phone calls? I got like 200,000 cash offers that I've made in the last three years. And now we got the data. I go call these people. We could call them and say, Luke made you an offer. Why don't you take it? You know, any chance you're still offer is still interested in taking it? Like I got it all in my databases. That would be one hell of a call job. Like you could do that. I mean, I, you want to sell land? Like I might be able to give you some kinds of kickbacks on you selling land. We'd have to have the right kinds of paperwork in place. Um, Cause I'm not a real estate agent. I'm not a broker. You can't be a real estate agent representing someone else's land. We'd have to get you in on some kind of ownership of the land to say you're sell it for sale by owner. But maybe we could work something out. But I mean, really it's, um, um, I think you should look at this as a tool like to learn and create your own business out of. I think it's, there's a lot of moving parts in this and you probably don't need me. You know, you could do it on your own without me. Just watch enough of my videos. There's totally enough information there to go for it or go to, um, let's, uh, I'll promote another website that I like landacademy.com. So this is where I learned how to do land trail, land deals. Like there's all kinds of land deals here. And um, I think they might be sold out or really close to sold out. The last time I was looking at it, they had, they're, they're capping at 500 members. Let's see if they say, I don't know where it says. I don't know, but uh, so landacademy.com, I'm getting lost in their website looking at the different stuff. But if you go in there and join or look at it, they've got different ways to join and learn and everything. And they've got like the, the main membership is they're capping at 500 members. And last time I was looking at it, it's not very long ago, they had 495 members. So they're just open to like five more members and they cap it out. And if some people drop out over time, maybe they'll open it back up. But basically just another five five more members to sign up and they're they're closing their doors on the education of how to do these land deals and um i think they've got a really good education really get you started get your concentrated set of information in one place to roll through it and just start slaying land deals and go do land deals all day long um i mean Look at ruralvacantland.com. Like most all those people on there are members. I think they're all members of uh, Land Academy and learned how to do deals off of Land Academy. You don't, you don't need to work for someone else. I'm a big proponent of working for yourself. Maybe I'm not very good at hiring because of that. <laughs> Backwoods Punglo. Brenda, one plot on website in Ohio, 1.7 acre, $12,000. Yeah, Jason Cochran. I just bought 0.66 acres in Joshua Tree. Kind of far to commute to LA though. <laughs> nice. Good job, Jason. Um, Backwoods Bungalow. Newcomers Town, Ohio Junction of US 36 and Ohio 258. Okay. Uh, yes, for the Black Friday promo, I'll waive the dock fee. Put only the down and get your land. Yeah. Yes, sir, Lillingston has a bunch of good properties. Let's pull him up on here. So he's on ruralvacantland.com. And uh, let me get onto the right screen. So what I'm doing is I'm going to listings and I'm going to landowners. So listings and go to landowners. And then we got Yasser. Yasser's down here. We just I saw Michael going by in the comments. Michael's on the live show. Yasser, he's just uh, chiming and he's on the live show. It says he's got 10 properties on here right now. And um, so that, I think that's a combination of the ones that are for sale and the ones that are sold. Here's a picture. Yasser is in the chat, right? So his picture's right over here. I'm guessing that's his wife. Hopefully it's not his uh, mistress and his wife's watching this. And so here we got... Uh, um, Yasser's got his phone number and his pictures and he's got these properties. So he's got multiple different properties and he does really good owner financing guys. So if you're looking for owner financing, like really easy owner financing, he does a lot of owner financing. Let's go check out, check these out. I made a couple videos this weekend about his properties on TikTok, And, uh, I think one of them, I forget which one of them, but I think it had like 10,000 views or something just yesterday. People asking questions, all kinds of questions about his land. I'm like, you got to talk to Yasser. So hopefully some of those people uh, convert through and talk to Yasser and buy the land. I'm sure they will over time. It's just a matter of time. Um, Kaylee, land can't pay taxes. <laughs> what does that mean? Land can't pay taxes. Uh, 
I'm not sure what she means. <laughs> Casey, wow, Joshua Tree would be cool. Jason Cocker, now I can work from home. Mostly only have to go to El Segundo for meetings. Yeah, I think so. We got some Joshua Tree properties on the website. Um, so if we go look at uh, San Bernardino County, I think, Joshua Tree. I think it's San Bernardino County. So let's go um, California, San Bernardino County. For sale. Let's look up Joshua Tree. Here's some Joshua Trees. Four point or two and a half acres uh, by Joshua Tree for four thousand five ninety seven. Here's two and a half acres. Another two and a half acres four thousand nine nine seven. And then there's uh, this is the twenty acres that's further out than Joshua Tree I was talking about. It's five thousand nine nine nine. And then I got eighty acres. Like this is a crazy big one. You can drive right up to it. It's just on the outside of Barstow. That'd be a drive down to Los Angeles. I mean, if you're just going for a meeting every now and then, you could do it, but I don't think you'd want to commute from up there. But if you did, I mean, you get 80 acres overlooking like a bunch of BLM land, so it's not just 80 acres. I mean, you could ride your dirt bike all day long and just you know, multiple different directions, just go tear it up out there, right? So there's lots of properties to choose from. Um, Nick. Nick S says, good morning, Luke. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Any updates on the financing closing for the 2.65 in King County? Yeah, so Nick, hopefully it's okay to say this on the live show. I, I, I did some deals in the past and I invited guys to send in money to pay for mailers. And then I split the profits on these mailers with them. And so Nick is one of the guys that sent in money, Nick S, and uh, we got a deal. So I bought this, he bought this property in King County. Maybe Nick can correct my numbers, but I think it was like, $20,000 or $16,000 or something like that. And um, we put it up for sale for $45,000 and got a bidding war. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> everyone started sending in offers. We got a bunch of offers and the highest offer, I got to kick myself in retrospect, but the highest offer, uh, they're using financing and like probably the second and third highest offers were going with cash. And I probably should have gone with one of the cash ones. Uh, the financing guy, hopefully he's not on the show or whatever, but even if he is, whatever. Um, the financing fell through. But you know what happened is the realtor that was representing the buyer where the financing fell through, he said he would uh, step in and co-sign on the financing. Have you ever heard of a realtor that would do that, guys? Holy cow. Talk about a good realtor, and the realtor's like, "Oh, this property is really cheap. It's, it's really good deal. We gotta, gotta, gotta land this thing." And they got five thousand dollars of earnest money on the line, right? And so if they lose, if they, if their financing isn't working, we keep the five grand, and then we sell it to the next guy that's only like thousand or two thousand dollars less in price and willing to pay cash. We had some other people that came in with higher prices afterwards, so if they fall through. I mean, we'd take some of the higher prices and close with them that want to pay cash. Um, yeah, so the bidding war went up to like 54 and I got somebody who wanted to pay 57 grand cash, um, for this property. It's cause I was selling it so cheap compared to everything else in the area. It's a hot market. It's right next to Seattle. And, uh, um, yeah, so he's asking about what's going on with the financing. So yeah, it's a mess. Like I've been going back and forth, spend just drama day after day after day, trying to get it to happen. We got some different financiers that um, say they can close real quick and uh, I should get some updates on that right after this live call and I'll try to get them into the, the software so Nick you'll get updates. Hopefully the updates kick through to you on the tracking software of these deals. And then Nick makes to stand, stands out to make a good chunk of change off of his cut of the deal. So I had some, I had one, I had someone else finance it and so he gets He's getting uh, half the profits on the deal. And then Nick put up the money for the mail and he gets half the profits after the financing, which kind of comes out to be like 25% of the profits. And then I keep 25% of the profits. We're putting it all together and making it happen. And I hope to do a lot more deals like that. Um, I can't do more of them until I finish the ones I've already promised. It's just not right. I got to finish the ones I've already promised to people and get that uh, all cleaned out and caught up before I offer more of those kinds of deals to other people. Um, so that's where we're at on that. I'm excited about that property. 
I should, I'm learning more every day. I should have taken a cash offer and short closing time frame over the little bit higher offer and financing. So that's how it goes. Okay, Casey says, I want to be able to run on solar and get internet connection to work for my rig. Yeah, Casey, or bring a trailer to set up. I mean, there's there's so many properties you can do that on. You know, San Marino County properties, go for it, right? Um, Jason Cochran, nobody mentioned it. I'm about to close on it for quick resale, though. <laughs> nobody mentioned it. Good. Uh, so I think Jason's talking about um, the uh, the land by, by uh, Joshua Tree. And if that's Jason Cochran, I'm thinking about Jason, if that's the right Jason, I mean, he writes a lot for Land Academy and doing blogs and he promotes um, land deals and he's, he's a land dealer himself and he's uh, in the, very much the educational personality side of, of land. So it's cool to have him on here. Thanks, Jason, for coming on. If I got the right Jason. Chris Kane, hi. KC Parker, Arizona is close. It's cool. It's where they hold the van build. Okay, gotcha. Um, Backwoods Bungalow, MC, 18 is best time to buy land. Minimum age in Florida is 18. Yeah, so there's no minimum age to buy land. I just want to correct that a little bit. There's a minimum age to sell it. So if I tried to buy land from you and you're 17, and you signed the paperwork, and then I went to go sell it to somebody else or whatever I did with it, when you turn 18, you could come back and you say, ah, 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 I wasn't old enough. That's not a legally binding transfer. Give me my land back. And so I got to watch out for that as a land dealer, buying land from people. I got to make sure they're old enough to sign the contracts. And um, yeah, it's just part of it. So it's part of having clean title. So don't don't try to sell land if you're under 18. If you're under 18 and you want to do land deals, you should probably start using a, you know, an attorney to be like signing stuff on your LLC, go buy them an LLC or maybe your parents or your brother or somebody who's over 18 that can sign stuff on your behalf or a trust of some kind with a trustee that can sign on your behalf. I mean, you could be doing the deals and everything, just get somebody else to be signing the deeds, someone in the, that can be in a signing capacity or whatever kind of setup you're in. I opened brokerage accounts when I was in, uh, let's see how old was that? Um, it was before I went to boarding school, so it was 10th grade. I don't know how old I was in 10th grade, but I wasn't 18, 16, I guess. And I was doing a lot of day trading, and I was buying and selling stocks, and the internet was taking off, and I was like totally into it. And um, I started out with uh, Daytech. They had some pretty cool systems, online trading systems. I'd trade a bunch there. Well, before that, I did, uh, I had a local hometown broker in a little town. Um, but my, my um, I, forget, I forget how I opened that account. I didn't have much of any money. But eventually I got one through Daytech and I just left the, the um, you know, the date of birth part of it blank and they just opened the account. It's like, ah, oh, cool. <laughs> and then later I wanted to go to Castle Securities as Daytech got bought out by Ameritrade, merged in and prices started going up and it wasn't as efficient and everything. And so I, I wanted a day trading account with Castle Securities, which I could trade down to, I think it was the 256. It was when we were doing fractions. And so 256, I could be in between the 16th. So I could be beating out the 16th and, on the buy and the sell, and I could just go back and forth inside other people's bids all day long as fast as I can hit the button. Keep turning money into money. I was so addicted to that. And uh, so Castle Securities, I mean, they uh, they requested that you be 18, and I was like, yeah, just not going to fill out the, that part of the paperwork, left it blank. And um, they were like, no, you got to sign it. I'm like, but I'm not 18, but here you go. Here's a letter that says I'm, you know, for, I, my religion doesn't follow, we don't keep track of age, so it doesn't apply to me. Here you go. <laughs> Sent them a letter, <laughs> a religious letter. And uh, yeah, I got my account open and started trading at Castle Securities. Castle Securities is a lot of fun. And then later on, it's, uh, you know, I was trading through high school between classes, during class. I had a lot of fun doing that. Eventually, the market crashed on me and I got my butt handed to me hardcore, but I learned a lot. It's Joshua Tree, Will Blast. It's listed in San Bernardino. It's listed in San Bernardino County, close to Joshua Tree, near border of Arizona. Parker is the city closest to it. Okay, gotcha. So the van build is, yeah, part, I know where you're talking about. They bring in outhouses for the van builds, and many RVs have their own facilities. Yeah, exactly. So 
I mean, I, I talked to the guy, I forget his name, but he's like a big YouTube personality for the van builds and it's just totally going off. It's an awesome thing. I was trying to, yeah, Jamie's, Jamie's van build. See YouTube channel Enigmic Nomadics, exactly. He's got a really good show going on, showing about setting up solar on your van and all kinds of different things, van setup stuff and helping other people set up their vans to go for it. It's a really cool YouTube channel and I wish I could have sold him land, but I just never did. I was hoping to do a deal with him where I could basically give him the land and he'd help promote my land. And um, it just never materialized. Yo, wow, wow. guys, help Lou out and put the APN number up. List on properties you like. Yes, yo, wow, wow. please, that would be awesome. Instead of uh, let's find this land, we can be like, let's talk about this land. Um, so Smart Alec Productions, looking at um, this property in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, in Otero County, 2,999.3 acres. Looks like a really neat area, nice trees, interesting climate with cool vibe. Would slap down a kit A-frame and use it as Airbnb. Okay, let's, let's check this one out. So this is Smart Alec. Um, so we're going New Mexico, or let's just do the search. He put the actual number in there. So I'm, it's a different computer, so I can't cut and paste it. But let's do R037798. Let's see if that works. So I'm putting, whoops, I wanted to show it on the screen. Here we go. So I put it into the search, like the search part of realvacantland.com. Here we go, Cloudcroft, Otero County. Yeah, look at those trees. I bet you the elevation up here is crazy. It's like almost 8,000 foot. Do you see the elevation on this? If it's in the same neighborhood, I'm thinking. I've had properties up here before. Let's see what this, the elevation is. Elevation, ho oh, ho, what did I guess? I guessed 8,000 foot. 7,999, I was off by one foot. Uh, this is in uh, Cloud Country West, number one block. Okay, it's not the same subdivision I was thinking of, but it's it's up there. So the elevation is, we're at 8,000 foot, guys. So think about that. You're gonna get like winded walking around if you're coming from lower elevations like me. One beer and you're done. Don't buy a six pack. <laughs> So here we go. Here's the street and it uh, looks like there's a power line. Looks like there's some cabins in the area. Looks like there's a bunch of nice trees. Wonder what's around there. There's a bunch of cabins. Look at that. Looks like it's happening. Probably a great place to be in the summer and get out of the deserts and stuff. There's a bunch of cabins up in this area. Oh heck yeah. Let's look at satellite. Lincoln National Forest. Lincoln National Forest, where are we at? What part? Okay, so we're north of El Paso. We're uh, east of El Magordo. Roswell, New Mexico is over here. Albuquerque's up here. So I've never seen this property before. This is pretty neat. Let's look at this one a little bit closer. So Andrew Goring has this one, $2,999 for 0.3 acres. See, this is this would be the kind of property I'd love to go make a video about, put it on YouTube and on uh, TikTok. So look at that street. Look at those trees. Imagine the flowers that happen in the spring there. Whoa, look at that. You see deer walking through. I, I don't see any deer in the picture, but I bet you they do. They're chomping on that grass. They got some descriptions where the land is. They actually got a stop sign up there. I'd probably have fun, use that some target practice. But uh, some nice looking trees, cabins around the area. Looks like a little uh, gated community kind of thing. That's pretty cool. That's a cool property. Backwoods Bungalow. Next RV living event is Bob Wells RTR in January 2020. YouTube channel Cheap RV Living. Nice. <laughs> There's so many of these going, guys. RV RV channels. I love it. The communications we have out there is getting so much better. You guys can all meet up. I have to take my daughter to work. Hope to catch you next time. Desperate for need of free land. Just something big enough for my tiny house and garden. Thank you, Brenda Porter, for chiming in. Buddy Tom. Lake is Three Rivers, Michigan area a good area since you're familiar with it i think it means to say luke is three rivers michigan area good i don't know where three rivers michigan is there's so many rivers and lakes in michigan <laughs> i don't know i don't know that area i'm still looking for oh lost my spot here we go 
Chris, I'm still looking for a place with a pond. Nice. Place with a pond, place with a pond, place with a pond. I'm thinking we got, uh, you can overlook a pond in Shasta County. You got one by a pond in Shasta County. I got one next to a pond in um, um, Chico County, Arkansas. Um, none of them are on a pond, though. I don't think I have any on a pond right now. I think he wants a place for his ducks. Your uncle sounds like he was a great guy. Yeah, my uncle was a was a cool guy. His his uh, his body didn't last any longer. I mean, it was he was always having a hard time with his body. Finally, he outlived it. His body gave up on him. Pond would be awesome, stocked with fish. Exactly. Ray Nomadic. Didn't you just put up a property in Washington with septic? What one was that? Didn't find it when I looked on your site. Yeah. So the one in Washington with a septic. So it doesn't have a set. Well. Is there another one with a septic? There's, an, there's, I've got two of them in Washington. So I put one up with a septic. You're right. There's one that has a septic. Let me pull that up. I think it's in Cowlitz County, Washington. And there's one that has a septic approved in Kitsap County. So let's do both of them. Let's look up Washington. This list is getting kind of long. So Washington and for sale. So I think there's Cowlitz County. I probably should have just narrowed it down to Cowlitz County, but uh, I think I could pick it out of the, the list. Um, these are all the Washington properties we got going on right now. We got two pages of Washington. Washington's going off, guys. Yeah, this one's got a septic. So Cowlitz County, Washington, 1.89 acres, 39,997. Like my crazy numbers. Yeah, so it's got a road. You could drive up to it. There's a driveway, like halfway carved in there. And then there's a spot where a guy put a septic in in the past. You might have to like renew it because it's old. Um, you probably got to dig it up, let the inspector come inspect it. Maybe you could like rebury it. But if you're going to dig it up anyway, you probably want to put a new one in. So, but it, there's there's a septic there. There's a stream that runs by the back. So I think it clips a corner over here and over the back side. So there's a spot in here to put a house. That's what it looks like. So if you're interested in that property, this is Cowlitz County, Washington. It's on a stream and it's got a paved road with utilities and it's ready to go. Like go knock it out. Let's, let's look at the other one. So I had another one in Kitsap County, Washington. That is, let's find it. It's really lush and green. Two acres, masking $74,000. And uh, you gotta look at the pictures of this thing, guys. Like I just, I, I can't ever get over the pictures. This is like, if you ever look at the tiny home stuff on Instagram, <laughs> some of the best ones look like they're in woods like this with moss hanging off the trees and ferns coming out of the ground like these big ferns and awesome looking green trees little little stream back there streams running through it it's roads just trees and ferns and streams it's got it's all staked out it's got telecommunications I got a septic plan on it look at those trees nice big old uh, cedar trees you know, every time I see a cedar tree, I think this time I was riding my dirt bike, I was probably 12 years old or something. I had this XR75, it's like orange Honda dirt bike, right? It's just a little guy, but I was a little guy too. And I was going way too fast down a dirt road just like this. And I missed my driveway and we had this big uh, cedar tree right at the, the opposite corner. And I had slammed on the brakes and I was trying to make it into the driveway. And oh, I hit the front brake just at the last second. I thought I was going slow enough. I could use the front brake just to help slow me down. Yeah, right. <laughs> that bike bucked me off so hard. I went flying upside down into that tree, hit my back against the, the tree with my head facing down, my helmet smacked on the tree. And I just went like pile driving down into the branches. So that was after I went through a bunch of cedar branches, hit that tree and I went down and just smashed everything. I was so beat up. It was so tore up, but I cared so much about my bike. My bike was on its side and it had the, 
the 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 revving thing was stuck in the gravel and it was the rpms were going crazy because it was like trying to go off and the wheel wasn't on the ground touching anything so it's just screaming at me like get out of the tree luke come here and fix the bike and so i couldn't even i couldn't breathe i couldn't i was seeing stars i still got over there and i got that bike turned off <laughs> i just laid there on the ground <laughs> trying to catch my breath I walked away, but that's what I think of when I see cedar trees, like that time I smacked that tree so hard. Oh, look at these pictures. This is, uh, this is like a year ago's picture. So there's a nice stream flowing through there, the ferns going off, it's raining. and Yeah, so this property, it's got a septic plan. And it's somewhere here. I think I got it on the website. I don't know if it's in the pictures or where, but I got it. At least I have it on file in my databases if you really want to go for it. I'm not sure if it's in the pictures. Maybe I got too much stuff in the pictures. But I got a septic plan. I got a link to it on here. But the septic plan has, I don't see it. The septic plan has it all mapped out. Where the septic, where a house can go and a garage and a driveway and a septic system, and the leach field and everything with the, with the stream and the water setbacks and the natural areas. So I got it all mapped out by engineering and engineering of who, who's done the engineering with their phone numbers and everything. Got it approved by the county and then it expired. So it's, ex it's approved, but it's expired and you'd have to go revive it to bring it back. So you just revive the same plan with modern, uh, modern regulations and go bang it out and put a house in this property. So I, I really think that's a good deal for the right person. $74,000 for 2.5 acres and everything else in the area. I mean, people yell at me for making cash offers in this area like crazy. I didn't get anything close to these prices, but this and uh, a couple others, but like we got the cheapest, cheapest one tenth of 1% of properties in the area. People are willing and able to sell and um, got them up for sales, the cheapest ones in the area and hopefully they'll sell. So that's coming up. Okay. Amitha Williams finally got my deed for my free land. Yeah. Thanks. Have you received the deed to the Arizona property yet? The Arizona property. So, Amitha, uh, we got this Arizona one where the deed was screwed. I screwed up because, like, the rules changed. You know, I, I hold myself responsible. I get pissed off at the county for changing the rules on me but and making it hard for me to deliver the split land that I sold you. But it's still me that's got it. And uh, I think that just came in. I think I saw it in a pile of mail. Like, I got... My mail's crazy. I get these, you know, these plastic crates, like a, I can't even lift it. I like drag it out of the mail shop kind of mail when I get my mail. So I got one of those things. And I think I saw it in there and I got to process it and make it happen. So if it's in there and it's signed and everything, I'm going to get your money. Sorry about that, Amitha. I just got juggling too much. So maybe one of these nights this week, like I can get the kids to bed early and I can like go through my mail and go make it happen. Uh, EOWA1, I want a place in Poor Valley, Virginia, where they won't let anyone plug in a guitar and d disturb my daily naps. Dis probably disturb my daily mat. mat. <laughs> nice. EOWA1, I want a place in Poor Valley, Virginia. Okay. I think we got West Virginia land. I was just so showing some of that, but I don't think we have Poor Valley, Virginia. We'll just keep it coming. Meet the Williams, finally got my deed for my free land. Okay. I, was, I just read that one. Uh, living your passion is what it's all about. Exactly. That's where you got your entrepreneur spirit. <laughs> going, to, going to crazy auctions with my uncle. <laughs> the guy was hilarious. He'd have, me, he'd have me listen to the auctioneer and write down what he's saying. And my handwriting is horrible, guys. My handwriting's so bad. But that's why he'd take me to auctions. So he could understand what he's saying. <laughs> my uncle would go, it was so embarrassing. Like, I make lowball offers on land now, right? But my uncle, holy cow, like, when it comes to buying a tractor, like, just buying, like, a lawnmower, John Deere lawnmower, he'd go to every garage sale, wherever they have John Deere, all the John Deere dealers, everybody knew him. Central Michigan, everybody knew my my Uncle Brian. And uh, he, would, uh, he would make him an offer. And it'd be, like, $10. You know, and the, the, the seller would look at him and he'd be like, I'm trying to sell a tractor for $5,000. What do you mean $10? You know, like, the, 
and my uncle would start talking. And uh, my uncle would usually know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows the guy. And come around, and he'd become friends with them. They'd be best of buddies. And my uncle would walk out of there. Maybe he'd pay him $20 and give him a chicken or throw in a goat or something. Like, he would, he would haggle out the craziest deals. And the guy would give him the tractor, and the guy would, like, deliver it, you know? Not only would he get an awesome deal, but the guy would bring the friggin' tractor to my uncle's, my uncle's uh, yard and park the thing. And my uncle would go in the freezer and be like, you know, here's a... Here's a half of a lamb, you know, frozen lamb, still got the hooves on it and stuff. <laughs> and give it to him. Like, here's your deal. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. He just had the best deals. Like, he was the best dealer ever. I, uh, I got in trouble when I was, um, it was like the party for the last day of high school. And I was in uh, northern Michigan, in Traverse City, Michigan. My uncle went to school in Eaton Rapids, Southern Michigan. It's like three or four hour drive south. And uh, my friend had a, had a fake ID, photo ID to buy alcohol. And we went into the store and he was buying alcohol and um, the guy behind the counter flipped out on us and chased us out of the store and I was driving. We got in the car and took off and everything. He had video cameras and he got my license plate. I even went in reverse out of the parking lot, like up the street and around the block and everything. So he couldn't get my license plate, but somehow he still got my license plate. And uh, he, uh, he turned, turned us into the cops, but I was at the party by then. And they called, you know, the cops said, I think I know his uncle. And uh, so he called my uncle, my uh, different uncle and Sure enough, that's the right Luke Smith. It's not that small of a town. And I said, okay, here's his phone number. And they started talking, like, it's the same family as Brian Smith. <laughs> like, I remember Brian Smith from this and that. It's like, yeah, Brian, this is when he was still alive. And he had worked, I had no idea that my uncle worked at a fire station. Like, I don't know, answering the whatever. I don't even know what he did at the fire station. Fix the fire trucks or something. And uh, this guy was a fireman back in the day before he became a police officer. And so he knew my uncle Brian and he knew my uncle, my uncle uh, Harry. And so he calls me, the policeman calls me and he says, you got to come to the police station. I'm like, what? How did you even get my phone number? How is this? This is crazy. This is before skip tracing, right? And uh, I said, fine. And so I went to the police station with my friend and brought my friend in. He had no idea who he was, but they knew me from my family. And... Gave me the whole spiel of how bad it is for buying alcohol and everything and underage, blah, 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 blah. He said, but I know your Uncle Brian. <laughs> he started telling me about different stories from my Uncle Brian. And uh, he let us go. He gave me a warning, sent us packing, don't get in trouble, you know, went back to the party, run on from there. My Uncle Brian got me out of jail, basically, because he just, he just that crazy. Um... Uh, I have an RV in Needland. I am I am that I am that guy. Just need one with septic. I can do solar if need be. Water I can get. Thanks. Okay. So Ray Nomadic. Like if you have an RV and you need land with septic or sewer lines, I got a bunch of these properties in Arkansas for like five hundred dollars. They have power lines, sewer lines, or you could do septic or maybe some where there used to be a house. There's like an old septic you could revive and run with. So go look at the ones in Arkansas, like $500, you got a property. You don't have to stay there full time. It could be like until you find the next one and you just keep watching the site. Maybe we've got a $1,000 or $2,000 one in Arizona and you just change depending on the weather and the season. You go back and forth. Maybe you collect one in northern Michigan or Montana or you know Washington or wherever over time. In Florida, you go back around wherever you have family and friends. You pick up these properties. That's what a lot of RV guys do is they collect a couple over time. They move back and forth, and they get their they get their uh, their setups there and ready to go, and they just move depending on the weather or their, whatever they feel, right? Ringo Starr, Luke, I know a senior that bought one acre in Kingman, Arizona, many years ago. How much is it worth? A one acre in Kingman? Is this like downtown or on the outskirts? I sell those one acres in the outskirts for like two thousand dollars, maybe fifteen hundred dollars. I just bought one. I bought one for. Uh, I bought a half dozen properties off this guy, and uh, I didn't really want to buy them. They're like just kind of ugly properties, but one of them was a one-acre property and just outside of Kingman. 
I said, uh, I'll give you a hundred dollars a piece. Um, I'll do all the paperwork and, uh, like you're going to have to find a notary cause I don't even want to pay for a notary on this one. So just take it to your local bank, get it notarized. So I shipped him cash and the paperwork to get it notarized hundred dollars a property. And, uh, the guy sounded trustworthy and this was just really recent. He hasn't sent me the deeds back yet, or maybe they're in the same mail with Amitha Williams mail that I got to figure out. <laughs> Probably they're in there, but I just bought one, one acre one outside of Kingman for hundred bucks. So, I mean, the buy side's different than the sell side. This, a lot of the sell side is the presentation and getting it, driving it home to the right person. So there's big differentials in these properties. A buy for 100, sell for 1,500 or 2,000 or something like that, right? So that's, that's my point of view of the land around Kingman. If you're in town, maybe it's a little bit more utilities and stuff, maybe five, five or 10 grand, right? Um, gross, I'm vegan. I prefer to grow my own fruit and vegetables instead of animals. Nice. Yeah, there you go. KC. Um, Richard Bradley. Hi, Luke from England. Do you have some land for sale in the foothills of Yosemite, Mariposa County? Yes, I have some for sale in the in, uh, foothills of Yosemite, Mariposa County, and it's awesome. Just, just wow. Amazing scenery and privacy, but all amenities just down the road. Yeah, I like that one. That's, that's good land. Um, oh, 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 it says, thank you. Woodburger says, uh, uh, someone say free land. Yeah, free land. I give away land on these shows every Monday morning. Amitha Williams just comments just went by. She said she just got the deed to her free land and finally came in. Amitha, maybe you could put in the comments how long ago you won that land until it actually, <laughs> the paperwork went full circle. You actually got the deed on it. That'd be kind of cool to know. A lot of that problem is me being slow doing the paperwork because I'm doing, I just keep biting off too much. You know, just That's just my nature, guys. That's who I am. I bite off more than I can chew all the time. Like this property in the background. I'm still, I'm still looking at that picture. I gotta go make that one happen. Uh, hell yeah, I've watched you since I was 16, I think, and we'll definitely buy through you. Thanks for the info. Go MC. Buy, you're thinking about buying land at 16. Hell yeah, man. I think you're talking about Florida too. Have you ever seen um, uh, Paul Cafaro's YouTube uh, videos Paul Cafaro is like does all this fishing and like builds ponds in his backyard is I don't know he's like probably about your age and about 18 now I think he just graduated high school or I think he even dropped out so you can make YouTube videos I'm not exactly sure how that works he's talking about buying his own land too it's like 18 let's buy land that you can grow fish on it's like heck yeah buddy go do it make YouTube videos about it make it happen that's the new way the new age any Farmed animals, I have pigs, chickens, turkeys, and cows will be rescued and protected. There you go, Casey. Go for it. Go for it. My Uncle Brian, we're talking about my Uncle Brian. I mean, he used to he used to rescue, like, all the dogs. I mean, he would rescue. He had always had ducks, and um, he had different pigs. He had wild pigs on his property. He'd let the, he didn't mean to let them go, but they'd go, and I'd have to catch them. You ever try to catch a wild pig? Holy cow. They used to be tame. Now they go wild. Like, my God, those things... Get vicious. I used to fight those things, try to get them back into their pens. They bite, they scratch, they head butt, everything else. The trick I finally got, because they would run, they would jump into the pond and they go swimming across the pond like faster than I could run around to where they're going. I, I can't, I, I could never believe how fast a pig can swim. And then they go in the swamps. There's swamps in the back of my uncle's property. They go in these swamps. I'd be like knee deep. I think I'm chasing them in knee deep muck and stuff. And then all of a sudden I'd be waist deep or chest deep. <laughs> Those pigs just be going zinging right through there. You know, the way I finally figured out how to catch them was at night. I'd put food out for them, they'd come up for the food, and then I'd blast them with a spotlight. And then they'd get stuck in the light, and they'd be looking at me. And I had my I had a cousin who'd hold the light, and I'd go jump on them, you know, tackle one of those pigs, like shoulder to shoulder, buddy, like, <laughs> take them down, and then wrestle them back into their cages and squeal. And my uncle couldn't hear. He wore, like, big hearing aid, right? But those pigs screaming at night would wake him up. He about hit his head on the ceiling, he said. It's like one kind of tone that he could hear. It's the tone that just vibrates right through you, shake your bones kind of tone. It was a pig screaming bloody murder. But, I mean, yeah, we he rescued those from other people. I mean, he'd save them. He grew all kinds of animals. We grew lots of animals growing up, too. And Kirshny. I love that idea to purchase property and put in Craigslist and having them pay two to three times more than what you paid for it. Love your shows. I am learning a lot from your shows. Like <laughs> Luke, L-U-K-E-L-I-K-E is like, but close enough. I understand you. And 
And uh, yeah, my spelling's probably worse. Do do the five hundred dollar ones. Test it out. Buy a five hundred dollar property. Go put it on Craigslist. Go put it on. Uh, go put it on eBay. I mean, just put it on stinking eBay. And you, a lot of the people buy land off my website. They put it on eBay, and they put it on eBay. And they'll say uh, you're bidding for the down payment. And so your bid, your bid is for the down payment. I don't care if it's a dollar, hundred dollars, whatever. As long as you bid, you got a down payment. And then from there, you're making the monthly payments that it talks about in the auction. And the auction might be monthly payments for the rest of your life or something. But uh, people like to buy land and they like to get owner financing. And so eBay's got a whole lot of it on there. It's got some fees. I used to sell a lot of land on eBay. The fees stack up. They don't have the fees on YouTube and social media that you have on eBay. So it's like, I, it's cheap. I'm a cheap guy. I don't like to pay those fees. But if you don't have the social media presence, you can go sell them on eBay. Just pay the fees, right? You still make money out of it. Just put the bid above the fees. You get the money out of the front end for the fees, and then you collect money over the rest of forever on the payments. A lot more than you paid for the land. And that's how you turn a piece of land that's vacant, not paying anything, into a, a rent, if you call it rent. I don't know if it's rent, but an income-producing property. And it's producing a nice yield. You can get sweet yields off those properties. And you could beg that it's a depreciating asset because it's you know the more they pay the less of it you own but i mean lots of times it's it's just it turns into sweet cash flow and you can use that cash flow along the way to buy more of them you next time buy two and then four and then eight and maybe next time you're just like i'm not wasting my time with a 500 hundred dollar property i'm buying a fifty thousand dollar property and i'm going to sell it for fifteen hundred dollars a month for the rest of my life you go put it up there for sale like Things fly off the shelf. You put owner financing on there, they're gone. Gone, 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 gone. Um, Kurt Butterfield, yes, but I learned something every time I'm here for your shows. Good, thanks, Kurt. I'll try to keep them coming. Wood, Wood Booger says, is there something wrong with the free properties you give away? Um, no. What, what's wrong with free property? <laughs> like, you got, like, no room to complain when it's free, right? Just go sell it on Craigslist or have me sell it for you. I'll probably sell it for you. You know, I charge you 50% of the profits to go sell it for you. Uh, but you don't need me to sell it. I mean, it's better if you go figure out how to sell it on your own because then you're going to come back and you're going to buy more land from me. And I make money off of giving land away because you come back and you buy more and you buy more. People I've given land away to, they come back and they buy $50,000 properties. Like, so it cost me probably $50 and paperwork and time but fifty like dollars of cold hard money to give one of these properties away, right? And uh, well, plus postage, run around time, labor time that I pay the back office to put it together. And this is more than fifty bucks, but fifty dollars is a check I write to buy them. But uh, you know, you sell them for I sell them for five hundred dollars. The same kinds of properties all the time. You could probably sell them for I sold them for two thousand. I sold them for more. I sold them for fifteen thousand, depending on the property. Like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's advertising. It's advertising expense for me to earn trust, to get your attention, to sell you more land. That's just the way it is. Kurt Butterfield, how about I fix land problems for a shirt? Yeah, I fix land problems. I fix land problems. <laughs> exactly. That'd be a good one. I could get a good series going. Always learning from Luke. Thanks, Jovi. Ray Nomadic, can you get me into a house? If I find a nice house with land for 70K, what would be what would we be looking at for down payment and monthly payments? Right now we pay anywhere between five five twenty-five to six fifty just for an RV spot. Jesus. Five twenty-five to six fifty for an RV spot. I gotta make some RV spots to rent out. Man, that sounds like a lot. Um I mean, there's a bunch of properties on the website for like $100 a month or $200 a month or something you could put an RV on. And so he's saying, if I found a nice house with land for 70 k what would be the, what would we be looking at for down payment? So Ray Nomadic, um, I don't want... I'm not a banker. Like, I'm not going to finance some deal. Like, if you go find a house somewhere and say, oh, this looks like a good one. Luke, help me with the finance. That's not how it works. I can offer finance on these properties because I buy them so cheap. And that's it. Like, I can't offer finance because I'm Daddy Warbucks. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't doesn't happen. Um, so if I buy, like, these $50 properties to give away $50 property, right? 
I can offer finance on a $50 property, like $100 a month for 24 months or something, because it costs me 50 bucks to buy the property. So if I buy, if, I, if there's a house that's going for 70 grand, maybe I buy it for five, 10 or something, $20,000 nobody ever believes I could buy it for because the market's 70. And, but they just didn't ask. You just gotta ask for what you want, right guys? You just gotta ask. Most people don't have the nerve to ask. Like my uncle Brian had the nerve to ask. He had to unashamed, like no, no bars held back. He just asked. He just asked for what he wanted. This is how much I'll give you for it. And he got all kinds of deals. And I don't know if it's because people looked at him and they, they felt sorry for him or if they just, you just had the warmest heart and the best handshake ever. Like the guy was a hand crusher. He had one good hand and bam, like he would crush you if you go shake his hand. Like he's just that guy. And he'd look you in the eye, his one eye, and um, he just closed the deals, right? And, uh, yeah, he just asked, he had the nerve to ask. So $70,000 house, I'm not going to come in and be able to do anything. Cause like, just, I can't, but if I could say, okay, this is the house you like, it's this one for sale is $70,000 and you're willing to pay it. Probably someone else is willing to pay it around there for $70,000. Let's say there's a realtor in the way. We're not going to get a deal cheaper with the realtor in there. Like it's not going to happen. So let's say it's got two bedrooms, one bath. Let's say it's in town X and it's got this many square footage and you know, who cares what color it is and what street it's on and stuff. But if you get more generic about it, if you don't get your, don't let your wife see it and get fall in love. We just get the idea of kind of what you want and what you're willing to go for. What we could do is uh, we could mail offers to everybody in that area that has a similar kind of house and say, I'll offer you five grand for your house and uh, cash. I'm willing to close in like two days. I'm sitting here, I got the cash, I can drive over there, knock on your door with the paperwork, back, 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 back. you know, right here, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, come on guys, I'm ready to go. And uh, a lot of those people are gonna call back and be like, what are you crazy, you're on drugs, there's one down the street for sale for 70 grand. Yeah, right, like it's for sale for 70 grand, doesn't mean someone paid 70 grand for it, right? I'm offering you five grand today, like today, cash, here you go. Maybe you gotta throw in Uncle Brian's secret sauce and mix it up with some barter something on the side. I'll cut your grass on the other property you got, <laughs> whatever, you know? So throw in some something that means a lot to the person. And uh, tickets to the new baseball game, I don't know. And uh, you close, close the deal and just start talking to them. Just start talking to them, just talk pick up the phone, knock on their door, whatever. People that get back to you, they wanna sell. They just don't like your price. And your price is just an open offer. It's just the starting offer, it's the start of negotiations. And you take it from there. Before you know it, you're like trading your five grand in your old pickup truck for a house that you thought would cost 70 grand. And it's like, geez, man, instead of making a down payment on a $70,000 house, I'll just go buy myself a, a new truck. I'll finance a truck instead, <laughs> instead of the house, I don't know. So you just get creative with it. And uh, I, I don't know, some people hire me to do those kinds of mailers. Um, you could hire me to do that kind of mailer if you wanted to. I'd, I'd charge for it because I got a bunch of them I got to do. And I, my, I'm, I got a lot of back orders I got to fill up first. It'll take me a while until I get there. But I mean, you could go to Land Academy. You could learn how to do it. You could do it yourself. Or you could wait for me to catch up, hire me to do it for you. Um, I'm sure we'll get a house. We just get, on, get me on a phone. We'll go land them. Um... Parker, Arizona. It's north of the 10 freeway. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'll check it out. Uh, Catherine Kearns. I had a house in Houston, Texas for 16 years. I went through four hurricanes. Harvey did it for me. I am saving right now to get a place in Arkansas. I live in. I live on a pension from the VA. Hopefully in Arkansas. Yeah, hopefully in Arkansas. Go Catherine Kearns. That's the way to do it. Chef Leo, groovy man, oh, land ho, yeah, backwoods bungalow, MC, look look at the land for sale in Florida and describe how it would how it would improve your life. Then you have a chance to win a small piece of land in Arkansas that you can resell for profit. Exactly. So guys, that's the game we're playing. If you find a piece of land on realvacantland.com and you go, come on here in the live chat, in the live part, not the recorded version later, but the live part and say, this is the land, this is how it's going to change my life, this is how it's going to change it financially, impact, whatever, I'm going to be able to go to a great school, I'm going to be able to get a great job, I'm going to, 
I'm going to be able to get away from paying rent. I'm going to get away from this $500, $600 lot rent for my RV, you know, like whatever the story is, get it in there. And I'm going to compare these stories right now. I think oopsies went in with the $699 land house delivery. Okay. It's going to change his life. It's going to get him out of paying rent. He wants to do it for his family. And uh, I, I'm going to keep reading through comments but right now. I want to give oopsie a piece of land. So I'm not doing it just yet. I'm going to read through the comments, make sure no one beats him. And I'm judging, and there's a lot of room for judge on this kind of thing. It's not like a numbers who gets it right. It's a touchy-feely thing. So pour your heart out, and let's, let's make it happen. I'll give you a piece of land. Um, Backwoods Bungalow, are you careful not to hire unlicensed drone operators? <laughs> Breezy says, are you careful not to hire unlicensed drone operators? Looks like it could cost you 12K if not. Are there, are there fines on <laughs> unlicensed drone operators now? Uh, come on, guys. Really? That's just frustrating. Like, I mean, I hire these I hire these yahoos off of wherever I can get them to go get pictures. It's usually more like, can you find the right property? That's about, can you, like, fog a mirror? That's pretty much the barrier to get them in there to get the pictures. It's so hard to get people over there to, um, to buy, to get photos of these things. Jovi Bentalo, I'll do phone calls. <laughs> okay, Jovi, go. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I gotta, I gotta get the setup ready to do the phone calls. But I would love to. I I love the movie um, Boiler Room, and uh, I used to work in. It's not a boiler room, but it has some of the same kind of atmosphere, right? Of doing sales over the phone. We did it with stocks, and people would call in. We'd sell them stocks. And, uh, but Boiler Room, the movie, I mean, they'd be calling out and selling people stocks, a different story. And theirs was all scammy and stuff, but I think we could do it with land. We could set up a boiler room in modern day. It'd be virtual and everybody would be in different places. So we compare notes and stuff, but I mean, I can, I can finance it. I can sell it. I can make it happen. If we got the right deals coming in the door, um, we could really make it happen. So I, I would like to set up the, the full on software systems, you know, um, operating procedures if you will to work with other people doing phone calls to buy land and uh, I mean if you if you're willing to hit the phones and go buy land which I don't think would be that hard to do I just showed you the tools like in this call um, you could uh, you could come you could bring that land back to me and say Luke what's this worth and uh, I could be I could do my own due diligence on it I could say I, I, I'll pay you this we get it financed and go knock it out of the park you can get money like right up front, get wholesale fees, you can assign it over to me and I'll buy them, I'll buy them all day long. They have good deals, like look at this one in the background. I mean, this is me trying my heart out to buy land. I'm getting stuff on the ocean. Like go go knock out some of those things. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll find the money, I'll make the money happen to buy that thing, get you paid right up front or take a piece, go along for the ride. Like I, I'm totally game for it if you, if you can organize your own shop to do it it's even better i don't have it organized set to like ask people to do phone calls on my behalf yet but uh hope to someday i would love to do that you can move so much more volume of land chef leo good info thanks me too yeah backwoods bungle mc could be the next successful rural land dealer after luke and they would just keep bringing them on we need more land guys we we're selling land we we're buying land and if you want to sell land i mean we got realvacantland.com we could put land we could put land on there i charge $200 a month if you're buying it and you're figuring out your own financing and stuff and putting it up there 200 bucks a month you can put the land on the website i'll promote it as best i darn well can i just want really good quality cheap land like land dealer land not real estate phony baloney high price stuff i want real good land deals quality land deals people know what they're doing we'll post it on the website i charge them 200 bucks a month and you just get the you get a refund if you don't sell anything. So you only have to pay if you're actually selling stuff. Um, I don't know anyone else who charges like that for promoting land on the internet. It just doesn't happen. And I believe in that because your awesome land deals next to my awesome land deals means a lot more awesome customers. And that's why I do it. It's not about the 200 bucks a month. It's it's cost me a lot to keep up with it. Um, And if your land's not awesome, I mean, I just ask you to leave. You're not treating customers well. I'll ask you to leave. It's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm not the MLS and trying to police it and everything. Um, Backwoods Bungalow MC could be the next. Yeah. Uh, 
Gary Ray Ray. I'm looking for off-grid property near Whitman, Arizona, Wickenburg, Arizona, or Morristown, Arizona. So this is all like west of Phoenix. Um, I don't, let me pull up, uh, got the map search going here. So I'm on ruralvacantland.com. We got the map search. He's asking about places that I believe are all over here west of Phoenix, if I know, if I know I'm right. So Wickenburg, what's, what's it called? Whitman, Wickenburg, or Morristown. I think Wickenburg's over here. Morristown. Here's Wickenburg. Here's Morristown. Okay, northeast of town. We don't have anything up there right now. We got one over here that's sold. So if you want to be a land dealer and you want to target some areas, like we could whack this area. We don't have anything for sale up there, guys. And we could sell it to Gary Ray Ray, the cheapest stuff in the area. Everybody would win. Captain Mom, I moved here from Brazil 20 years ago, and if I knew I could buy land back then, I would be rich today. I want to buy land, then just can't decide where. Here's a good spot. This guy's just asking for land for sale here. Like, you could start here. You could start where you know. Start somewhere cheap. Build your way up. There's land all over the country. MC, haha, I only want to buy. But maybe in the future I'd be lying. And if, be lying for the land. I'd be, lying, I'd be lying for the land with a minimum wage job. So I'm definitely, I'd be probably tied to the land with a minimum wage job. So definitely limited to what I can do. So MC, think about this. I made videos in the past. Some people like to just buy land, but they don't have enough money to buy the land and build and do everything else. So, I mean, we talked about one way of buying properties, selling them on terms that could increase your cash flow to help you buy bigger, better properties. The other way is you could buy, let's, let's take this one in the background. Let's say it's, you could fit maybe, I don't know, two or three houses, maybe four or five houses along this canal. Should I sell it to one person with one big house or should I sell it to five people with a house like that? If I cut the thing up five ways, it's just an example. If I cut it up five ways, you know, I'd still have, we could do some paper ripping. Let's say this is the property. Let's see if I can rip it that many times. Oh geez, it didn't even go straight. But you know what I mean? Let's say, so here's person number one. Person number two, hopefully they're still all in the water. Person number three, we, sell, we just stole, sold to three people. I bet you we already got our money back and then some. Person number four, oh, they just gave us the money to build a house. Well, look, we still got a piece of land left. We got our land without any money into it and a house on it. Ha ha ha, that's the grandpa's recipe for land right there. That's how you buy land. You buy it, you split it up, sell the pieces. My grandpa used to do that. On a dig in Michigan, bought all this swamp land, started backhoeing around it, around the area. This is like a bunch of poor people. Everybody needed a job, you know, depression era. And uh, so he just had them start digging. Like, here's a shovel. <laughs> Swamp, right? Friggin' swamp. And I've seen these ditches. My dad went to take, show me these ditches, and they're like 20, 30 foot deep. And the road goes straight and uh, ditch down the side, and you get like beaver in there and muskrat and all kinds of stuff going on. But they clean out those ditches, and that would dry up the land. And then they could put houses on it and sell it as uh, farmland and houses. A house with farmland where it used to be a swamp. My, my uncle bought, my grandpa bought like. I don't know, section or a couple sections of southern Michigan swamps and started selling them off. He was trying to build a town. He didn't live long enough to see out his his dream, but he built a school. My dad and his brothers went to that school and uh, they had a little little store, I think, and uh, it was going to be like, you know, the intersection where it starts happening and the houses started going and uh, just never fully materialized, but it was the start. It was the right idea. He sold a bunch of land. Uh, sorry, but I have to finish. I need cheap, small lot. I can live, live RV and pay owner finance. Yeah. So I've got, uh, numerous lots all over the website. You can do owner finance, live in with RV. This message held for review. Um, backwoods bungalow. You got, uh, Google jailed here. It says plenty of cheap Arkansas property on Luke Smith, Luke's website. Check out YouTuber Bobblehead Homestead to see what can be done on, on a low income. Nice. Paying for, I've heard of realtors lending money for a down payment. There you go. Adam Mixo. Luke, I have a few properties I would love to list on your site. How do I list them? Adam, so go 
Um, I think there's a link in the description of this video and uh, it's to sign up to the website. And so you can sign up there and Gillian, the back office and stuff, they'll, they'll chase you down and help you from there. But it's basically $200 a month to post the properties on the website. And then you can, um, you just say, Luke, I didn't sell anything this month. And you get the $200 back. Luke, I didn't sell anything this month. You get $200 back. I want to be looking at your ads and be like, why isn't this guy selling? I'm going to be questioning the price, the titles, the pictures, like the presentation. I'm going to be questioning myself. Like maybe I should be promoting them more, making more videos, pointing them out to more people, telling other people about them and stuff. I'm going to try to get them sold because I, I want to keep that 200 bucks, right? I want you to sell. I want you to be happy. I want you to make it happen. So that's, that's how you get them on the website. Um, looking for RV okay property, one to five acres, anywhere west, like uh, Colorado, New Mexico, Montana, Texas, we are open. Yeah, so I got almost all those places got uh, RV okay properties all over, all over realvacantland.com. I mean, just uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It sounds like you already are. I make videos all the time. Um, go on, uh, go look at the history of my videos. I've described these properties one by one by one over and over and over again. And look on the website, look at the map search on the website for areas that you like and just start clicking on the properties and you start watching videos about them, reading about them, learn about them, go visit them, see which ones hit, hit your fancy. Hey Breeze, but your drone comment, can you buy a DJI drone? I forgot the model name, but it weighs just under the legal limit. So you don't need any licensing so you can easily save money to, <laughs> here you go. You can just buy a small drone that's under the, under the licensing limit, nice. Film your piece of land so you don't have to hire anyone. Uh, let's see, it's MC is saying, um, like some of these comments keep getting blocked out for whatever you guys are putting in there. Um, they go for 400 bucks. Yeah, man, game changer for aerial shots, no licensing, nice. New Mexico, the land of enchantment, another one of my favorite places. So guys, maybe I'm missing out. Where is it, Where are the drone licensing things? Is it all across the country or is it just California? And California probably started it, right? How did I miss those, those new rules? I mean, I hire drone dudes all the time. I just, right over my head. I'm always learning stuff, so maybe you guys can teach me about that. Um, Mr. Woolley says, Luke, those countries that don't accept online payments, will they accept money order? Those counties, those counties that don't accept online, yes, they'll accept money order. If you can, if there's like a service that you can mail a money order, you could do that. Um, there's probably some, you know, Western Union or something, and maybe you'll mail them a money order. Um, you could do, maybe you can get a Western Union money order from Nigeria. I think Mr. Woolley's in Nigeria. You could send send the money that way for the land. Brenda Porter, I'm a chimer, LOL. I apologize again. I'm just so excited to be here live. Yeah, thanks, Brenda. Um, buddy time. Brenda, I have Willard, New Mexico corner lot I want to sell now. 0.7 acres. I'll sell it to you for 1400 cash or 7500 a month. So buddy time is on, um, it's on here. Michael's on the website. So if we go to the website, let me pull it up on the background. So we go to the website, listings, landowners. Um, he's on here and um, it's coming up somewhere. Here we go. So we got his properties. He's got five properties on ruralvacantland.com. And let's see what the properties are. He's talking about this one in New Mexico. And um, maybe it's this one. New Mexico, 0. 0.7 acres, 1,475 bucks. It's got some pictures. I haven't made a video about this one yet. I should make some more videos. But it looks like it's on the side of this little town. Looks like a corner lot, like he's just saying. Um, looks like there's mobile homes in the area. What county was this? I don't even think there's any regulations against mobile homes in here. So you can put a mobile home on a property. I think you can do RV living here too. I'm not 100% sure about that. Maybe Michael can chime in and say if you can do RV limit living or not. But Torrance County, New Mexico, I don't think they stop you. And this town so small i don't think they have local ordinances against it they might but i doubt it and just, just mobile homes in the area looks like there's a power line right there no that's a wall there's a power line right there power line there so there's a power line like two lots over i don't know if these guys got power line here's power might be power line right there maybe not right in front of the lot but there's some on either sides coming in so i'm sure it wouldn't take much to hook up a power line to that one Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Will Blast. The APN for the property is, but biz has been sold since I looked at it on Friday. But it's been sold since I looked at it on Friday. 
Yeah. Um, so Will Blast, oh, he was in the run-in for um, one early on, but if it's sold, I mean, I want ones that are up for sale. I'll find another one, Luke. My luck can't continue. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> well, anytime I wrecked on my dirt bike, I always thought, no, my bike. Hello, <laughs> well, thank God it only happened a couple times. Yeah, I know, right? No, my bike. Exactly when you crashed. I was so proud of that bike. It was my brother's bike. And uh, my brother passed on before I was born. And my, my parents started over. And uh, they had me later in life. And um, so we had a bunch of stuff left around from him. And th that dirt bike was sitting in the garage. So it was really emotional for me to play with that dirt bike. And so I always had to, for my parents, you know, because I didn't know my brother. And uh, so I always had to, like, sneak out with it. Like, finally, my dad broke down and got it fixed up for me and got it working. Uh, yeah, backwards. I started dirt bikes with a Honda 175. That 175 is a real dirt bike. My mine was a 75 XR 75. It's a little guy, little bike. Um, then 250 and finally 500. Oh, there's the smile. <laughs> yeah, when one of the Arkansas properties would be a major game changer for me, somewhere that I could use the land to become more self reliant. Exactly, like land can be a life changer. MC Cat, v Viva Loca. You should get an assistant or a few interns to help you. Guys, I've got I've got a bunch of assistants to help. Like I'm trying. They're probably watching the show right now. Gary Ray Ray Parker near Lake Havasu, Colorado River. Yeah, okay. Chris Kane, where else to go other than Arkansas for RV? I mean, a bunch of these uh, Arizona properties. Texas is really open for it. Um, I think a lot of the Florida ones are pretty open to it too. You might have to ask the different guys on there, but there's just, you just got to look at the properties. Usually you're trying to get out of town, out of, out of regulations, out of neighborhoods. Usually neighborhoods are the ones that really don't want you. My uncle Vincent was like that. An Iowa farmer who could trade goats and pet ducks for everything you needed. Yeah, exactly. Some of those guys, just amazing. M. Howdy Shell looking for some deep south swampland in Florida to hunt gators, snakes, and skunk. Skunk ape had and and a skunk ape habitation site. <laughs> what is a skunk ape? <laughs> Just for the heck of it. <laughs> yeah. So one of my my wife's dream vacations is to rent a swamp house in Louisiana where we can shoot snakes from the front porch and drink like Cooler's Light and you know shoot snakes. She wants to shoot snakes, and uh, I think <laughs> that'd be fun. I used to have a client who lived in. Uh, uh, like um, Sugarland, Texas. So he lived in in uh, River Bottom, Sugarland, Texas, and he was the funniest guy. He was always telling me about shooting snakes off his porch and shooting gators, and they had him down there too. Um, my wife's like vegetarian too, right? She wants to shoot snakes. Like I don't know what the whatever. Lol, that's funny, Luke. Chasing the pigs, <laughs> they're smart little guys. Those pigs are hard to. Ch Jeez, guys, pigs are really hard to catch. Chef Leo, let's make a deal. Exactly. Let's make a deal. Every time the phone rings, I'm like, let's make a deal. Smart Alec Productions. Florida land would be great to set up a greenhouse and raise veggies and or do some aquaponics set up year-round. I've seen some vids of people saying they make 10000 a month on raising organic greens. Oh, yeah, they totally can. Guys, I went to China two years ago, and... Uh, I've seen a lot of farmland in the U.S. Farmland in the U.S., usually a big tractor, you know, like air conditioning inside and everything, driving this monstrosity through the fields, tearing it up, planting stuff, slamming it out, growing in, in uh, economies of scale. China, they're like, ah, we can't afford a tractor. <laughs> we can't afford the land, but we've got some ingenuity. And so they get these little pieces of land, you know, little tiny piece of land that they got to, like, make their whole living on and... First thing they do is they add plastic, 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 plastic. You basically build a greenhouse, like a hoop house, right? And then they'll, they'll add water, they'll do aquaponics, they'll add levels, multi-levels of growing. Two, three, four, eight levels. You got water flowing all over the place. You got everything growing. It's like tropical inside. And they're growing veggies and exotic things you never heard of. And uh, who knows what they use, you, what kind of dishes they cook it into. When you order food in China, it's always a mystery of what, whatever the heck's in there. Um, usually tastes really good. I mean, I love Chinese food, but uh, the, 
they, they support their whole family of like 20 on one of these little tiny lots. And here in the, U, in the U.S., people make fun of some of the size of properties I got. But in China, I mean, they've got like their whole family living off the, the greens that they grow in one of those properties. And um, I mean, it's, it's just crazy different how much more efficient they are at using their land than we are. I mean, I flew across a bunch, bunch of China. I was just staring out the window and my jaw dropped the whole time. These little greenhouses. And it's not like greenhouse, greenhouse. It's like greenhouse, 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 green Like cookie cutter on top of each other kinds of greenhouses. Going right up the sides of the mountain, back down the valleys, right on the side of the river. Everything else in between. There's no land left. You don't see any land. They're, they're using it all. People are talking about farming and those guys are crazy farmers. So if you want to go Chinese farming here in the U.S. and you're going to do it organic like a lot of the Chinese do, you go sell, sell, sell. Sell to the restaurant, sell to the Whole Foods, sell to the specialty foods. Heck, sell it to, sell it to these box delivery companies that deliver dinner, you know, half-prepared dinner. I mean, those guys are using a lot of organics too. There's a lot of people you can sell it to. Just get creative. I mean, put it on social media. Sell it direct to the consumer. I bet you can do more than $10,000 a month if you set your mind to it. Pig chase and squeal in RE deals. Yep, I put the APN number as you asked. Other guys didn't. Thank you, Will. That's good. But isn't that the one in... Um, so Will Blast had the one up the top of the mountain, right? I, I really like it. I think it's a sweet-looking property, but I think it's missing the the emotional tug of how it's changing your life to go make make that property happen. I think it's a sweet looking property. I think it's a better looking property than the one in Arkansas for 699 that uh, Oops, he has that he's talking about changing his life and like his kid's life to move into a property like that. So that's, that's why I'm still going with Oops, over Will. Sorry, Will. Chief Leo, we have a nationwide food service feeding no, no history. Need a home base. Exactly. Jovi, Phone calls and I'll go out and take pictures and fly my drone too. There we go. <laughs> Casey never hurts to ask. Thank you guys. Thanks for asking to help. I'm. I don't feel like I'm built up enough to take on more help right now. I gotta. I gotta clean up my shop first before I can take on more help. Chuckles too. It's a ministry. <laughs> okay. Hi Luke. I'm pray. I'm paying over twelve fifty a month for rent, and I'm stuck. I need some land to start over with anywhere in the Southwest. Thanks, John Hebert. Southwest, we got land all over the place. Twelve hundred dollars a month. You're paying twelve fifty a month. I mean, you could go, you could go buy a RV, get that sucker financed out to the moon. You could buy some land on some owner finance. You probably hardly come out of pocket, hardly anything. And you could move that RV to some of this owner finance land for less than twelve fifty a month. I'm dead, dead sure of it. And it wouldn't take that long before you got the land paid off and the RV paid off. You could use the difference in between to even pay down more on the land or the RV, whichever one that seems to be the more expensive financing to you, and just uh, knock it out. I mean, maybe even do some other land deals along the way or whatever other business you're into. I mean, hell, go on, go on Upwork.com, see what kind of gigs you could get out of there. I mean, there's all kinds of gigs on Upwork.com. You could take down some of those gigs, get some extra cash to go uh, buy a property or finance the move or set up utilities or whatever it is you got to do. I mean, go check out Upworks.com. There's an unlimited amount of work there. There's a lot of people looking for help on all kinds of things. Whatever your passion is and your specialty is, I bet you there's a version of someone that needs that on Upwork.com. And you don't even have to go anywhere to do it. You can do it from home. Um... Uncle Brian's secret sauce is hilarious. Yeah, my Uncle Brian, baby. <laughs> we need more land for us RVers and tiny house people. Yeah, feeding feeding for free by making Uncle Brian's deals. <laughs> Take that lamb. Hooves and all. Yeah, and feed folks with it. Yep, we are both retired chefs. Oh, man, Chef Leo. I mean, he's the food going on in my Uncle Brian's kitchen, it was usually like spaghetti with... with uh, you know, ground up deer that somebody shot in my uncle's land and um, some uh, some red sauce, like generic, no no brand name, signature select red sauce or something, right? And some welfare cheese, some yellow block of welfare cheese grated up on top because a lot of the people in the neighborhood were, you know, they got all their food and everything from the government 
whatever they didn't shoot and eat on their own. It's a really poor part of Michigan. Uh, howdy shell make YouTube videos about it all and become a YouTuber star like Luke. There you go. We love recipes. This message how Adam says Humboldt County. Let's see. So Adam McSill is saying love the land in Humboldt County ID 10 acres. So he's talking about my 10 acre property in Humboldt County. I made a video about it on TikTok. I think it was yesterday and I was showing people how there's these big greenhouses on either side of the property and this property is in between. There's a road that goes right up to it and, uh, yeah, I got this girl, this local girl that will give you a tour of the property. She's a realtor and I, cause people are having trouble going out to see the property. I hired a local realtor that'll give like personalized tours of the property. She'll take you up there and give you a tour of the property and uh, right through all the guards that guard Murder Mountain on the way up to the property. And uh, let's pull this one up on the website. So if you guys are on uh, Netflix and you watch the show Murder Mountain and you're like, falling out of your chair saying I can't believe this is still in the US yeah we got some land there um, so this is in Humboldt County California and the show is if you haven't seen it it's all about uh, like how people go missing people just disappear when they go to this mountain and it's one of the largest marijuana producing areas in the largest marijuana producing area of the US and it has been since like 60s and 70s and it's been anti-regulation the whole way through it's like get out of here stay out of here this is our place this is our area we do what we want you get out of here to the feds to the states to the locals to everybody get out of here this is ours and so this is, gives you an idea of the kind of road running up into the property here's some pictures of the trees and the bush and here's a shot over the neighbors marijuana farms people just growing marijuana like crazies in this area it's just some shots the land I've had numerous people go up there and say they could fit a mobile home in there, no problem. If they could put their mobile home in there and they get, they want owner financing. Look, at there's a big greenhouse down here. Um, they all Everyone wants owner financing. So there's a big greenhouse over here. There's a big greenhouse over here. And the property's like right in the middle. And it's south-facing, south-facing slope. So it's where you get the best sun to grow, grow the most. And you can see different greenhouses in the area. It's a big river down below, nice mountains out around the area. So, I mean, it's a gorgeous, beautiful area, very remote. Slashes in the trees, the greenhouses, 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 greenhouses. All south facing, none on the north facing side of the hill, all south facing, like this property. This property is taken in the wintertime, there's a scattering of snow up top of the mountains. I'm asking $74,000 for this property. So if you want a place where the regulations don't reach and the rules don't fly, this is it. It's greenhouses. And these, it's legal to grow marijuana in California. You can grow, I think, six or seven plants or something. I forget how many. But if you want to go full-on commercial production like these neighbors are doing, uh, lots of the local regulations are... are um, Saying yeah, but you gotta give us give us the money, right? Get it, get it, get it, get it. I want I want you to pay like quarter million dollars a year, whatever. And um, so the locals want to cut of the action. Um, but up here, I'm not 100% sure if they're paying paying Humboldt or not. Like, good luck getting up the road, getting there. If you're not one of the locals, you're not getting there to go police this. It's just not gonna happen. There's guys with machine guns on the road saying nope not going up there you're not welcome they tell the sheriff off they tell everybody off nope so this is where you can go go um, have your freedom land if you want to get away from that and then you better get to know the neighbors and you better be in good good uh, communications and, and spades with them because your neighbors are the police and you're the police and you're you're doing everything on your own so there's some Humboldt County that's Adam Mixell's looking at that um, Dennis Lane, I'd like the brick house with the lot beside for 2500 in Arkansas. I could remodel the house for resale or rent it and stay on the lot with my camper. It would be perfect for me to get a, get a start. <laughs> yeah, I think those are all, I think all the brick ones are sold. I had a specific lady going after all the brick ones. I think that one's sold, Dennis. But I'll try to get some more of them. I think we got some more of them coming in. Chef Leo says, oh, we are. Yeah, Kurt Butterfield, hi, Luke, I'm back. I'm back, phone died. We'll have to catch up on the reply. There you go. Charlotte County, Florida, start a merch site and open a grill. Nice. Arizona has lots of RV land. Yeah, it does. 
Milky Cap. Hey, Luke, I just received a mailer update. Good. So maybe you got this one and that's in the picture in the background. If you just got that update. That was the last one I just updated. Chris Keene, I'm starting aquaponics in the middle of Bakersfield. Everything was just... I'm starting aquaponics in the middle of Bakersfield. Everything was just handed to me. Thanks for the pep talk. Nice. Good job, Chris. Go set it up. Like, there's... There's a bunch of YouTube channels talking about high intensity farming and um, you know crop rotations and the amount of days for different plants and they study it like a science and they look at the different ways of planting the seeds and making them happen all the steps and they just break it down into a production line of cranking that food out for the high the high dollar products uh, it's, a lot of it's the quickest turn and the fastest turn would grow that thing like growing sprouts right different kinds of sprouts and knocking out the sprouts this is like a seven day crop this is like a 14 day crop and you know and doing them on multiple times a week to get them ready for the market and when the market's ripe and yeah some of those guys just nail it the secret ingredient it's love baby yeah i love land it's love doing land deals that's the secret ingredient mixel i've always dreamed of being a farmer and humble nice adam i want to do chinese farming grow fruit vegetables yeah exactly those guys Crazy farmers. If we could get them over here, putting our land to work, whoo! Our, our the the what we'd have for sale in the stores would just be like, whoa, prices go like this, selection go like this. And a lot of people are like, no, 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 we got to keep the immigrants out. I say, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. I want to hire them. I want to eat their food. I want to shop in their stores. I want them to be washing the dishes. I want them to be taking care of the lawn. I want them to be cleaning the house. Later on, when they have kids, their kids will be building businesses and making America better in lots of different ways. We'll be buying their products and their services and saying, how do we live without these? You know, like, that's just how I see it, but that's not how everyone sees it. Chef Leo's secret ingredient, yeah. Um, one, two, okay, Chris Kane. I was up there, it felt like I was constantly being watched. That was Shelter Cove. Yeah, Shelter Cove. So Shelter Cove is a different in Humboldt County. So Shelter Cove, let's pull up this map. Not sure I have any properties left in Shelter Cove. Let's go to the map search. So Shelter Cove is a part of Humboldt County. It's this beautiful little neighborhood. It's on the ocean. It's got really good fishing. Yeah, they're all sold out. So I've had some there in the past. And um, you come down here and it's just this neighborhood overlooking the ocean. Some parts of it have sewer lines, some parts of it don't. Like the part closer to the ocean does, there's this kind of a stream in between that kind of breaks it off and there's just, the sewer doesn't seem to cross that from my understanding. But this side has a sewer, that side doesn't. And so you get down here in the sewer, they seem to be a little bit more expensive. A lot of people don't actually understand that so well. So sometimes you get some deals with people that just look at the price over here with no sewer and you can get the no sewer price on the sewer side. And then you could, I think that'd be the best trade. But uh, yeah, a whole bunch of properties and houses have been built in this area, but a lot of the properties are too steep to get septics in and they just make a mess. So this neighborhood has regulations. They say they want you to build a house before you start growing marijuana. So it's Humboldt County. Yeah, you can grow marijuana, but they want you to build a house on the property. So they're like, build a house, build a house, build a house. They want you to build a house. They don't want you to build a greenhouse. They want you to build a house. And then you can build a greenhouse after you build a house, but they just want you to build a house first. So I think a lot of people don't understand that. And then it just gets all frustrating and well that's how it goes that's my point of view of that neighborhood um had a mix of working on buy-in and selling to work up to property like the humboldt county nice hello well, what kind of farmer adam mixell <laughs> squinty eyes keep the immigrants deport the haters nice someone's on the same page as me um I live by the border, guys. I'm by the Mexican border. I love crossing the border. I like going down into Mexico and buying seafood and going to their stores. And um, I was just buying some meds for my dog. And it's like, why is this stuff so expensive? Is it worth driving over to the Mexican side and buying the meds? Probably. But I just order them from Canada. And, uh, you know, I think it's beautiful to live next to um, a border because there's extreme differentials for the good and the bad I, I'm, I'm not saying i like the differentials i'm saying it's beautiful because it creates business so if you look at all the cities along the border they're more prosperous because of those differentials and regulations of some sort like 
you could design and create on the American side a lot easier than you can on the Mexican side. But making it and producing it is a lot easier on the Mexican side for lots of different ways, like using massive amounts of lowly educated labor to run sewing machines to make jerseys for your football teams that you market football jerseys to for high schools, colleges, whatever across the country, for example. I don't know, whatever your product might be. But they need them right now. They got an order. They got to get it there quick. It's not happening in China that fast. It happens in Tijuana. Like, they bang it out, and it, and it goes. So there's people on the U.S. side that are owning those sewing shops on the Mexican side that are taking the orders, that are making the money off of what's going on on the Mexican side, and vice versa. There's people on the Mexican side buying stuff on the American side that's not available on the Mexican side and reshipping it off to different parts of, of Mexico. Like, it, let's say my my boat motor breaks down and I'm down Baja or something. You know, the parts aren't available locally. They don't stock them. They don't have the capital stock all the parts, right? They go over to like Honda dealer uh, in San Diego, if it's a Honda, and they say, I need part X, Y, Z, whatever they just go on Amazon, they get it shipped to their mail center. at San Diego zero right at the border. They walk across, they get the piece, take it to Mexico, mark it up two, three times. Here you go. Here's your part. You know, if you would have bought it in San Diego, it would have been a lot cheaper. There's a lot of business that happens. Ideally, in a more rational world that we go to someday, a lot of that will get ironed out and go away. But the way it is now, there's a lot of money to be made. It's like when wars are happening. You know, the people who are fighting the war need supplies. The people battling the war on the other side, they need supplies. I'm the guy in the middle, right? I like that's uh, that's just my disposition. I sell to them. I sell to them. It's like. <laughs> It's just the way it is. That's why I think a border is beautiful. Living by a border can be a cool thing. Um, and making stuff happen, making business happen, you can take advantage of it. But ideally, later on, over time, I hope the border goes away. And um, I think it would be a much more free world for all in lots of ways if it goes away. But that's just, I don't want to get political on here, and here I'm getting political. So I'm going to go with Oopsie. So Oopsie, um, O O P. S I E E E E Oopsie in the comments. I would like to give you a piece of free land for pointing out the ones in Arkansas that you say will change your change your family. They'll change your kids. It'll, it'll change your life if you have land like that that you can go build on. You can make happen and you can run with it. And I think that's really powerful. That's uh, that's economics. It's not just on the transaction economics. It's economics that could ripple through your family and your next generation in your family. And um, that can be a beautiful thing. So hopefully you end up with those properties or some like them. I'm going to give you some land anyway. And so what I need you to do, oopsies, I need you to send an email to my, to my, uh, my better half, whatever uh, you call them, uh, Gillian, G-I-L-I-A-N. So send an email to Gillian, Gillian at ruralvacantland.com. And um, she will get your information. In that email, I need your what name do you want to own this land in? So your title information. I need uh, an address that you want the deed to go to. Like Amitha Williams earlier on in here saying she finally got the deed. I need an address for that deed to go to. And um, I need, uh, what else I need? Your contact information. Like if I have questions, I need to get in touch with you somehow. How can I, how can I um, get in touch with you? So if you would put that in the email and send it to Gillian, G-I-L-I-A-N at ruralvacantland.com. We'll get you that piece of land. And please be patient with me. It's going to take me a while to get the paperwork rolled through. And what the paperwork is going to be, it's going to be a check for me to the state of Arkansas. I'm going to buy them from the state of Arkansas, unless we run out of properties. We might run out of properties over there. Um, as long as we don't run out of properties over there, it's going to be from the state of Arkansas. And... Um, it's going to be some paperwork that needs your signature because they got mad at me for giving people land and not getting their permission signed. <laughs> so I'm going to get you to sign off on the land that I'm giving you. And uh, so, yeah, you sign off on it and then I'll give you an envelope with it. You put the paperwork in the envelope. You know, you, I'll make a little post-it or something on there show you where to sign. Just sign it, put the paperwork in the envelope and put it in the mail. It's prepaid. You don't have to put any postage on there or anything. Just put it in the mail. And they'll go to the state and they'll do their dance. And you'll get some letters over time. If you would update me with the letters you get from them, that would be great. And then I can understand. I'll follow it through with my software and keep track of it, make sure it's happening. If uh, it gets rejected or not uh, approved or something, 
please let me know and we'll try some other land. So it might be a process of trial and error once or twice, or maybe three or four times before we actually get one for you. But when we get it, it'll be dirt cheap and you'll be like, holy cow, I can't believe it. I'm going to go buy a bunch of land myself. <laughs> You're going to copy me, I swear. But that's cool. That's what it's all about. It's going to start you off as in the land business. And um, that's the idea. So thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for playing Oopsie and everybody else, Will, um, that was uh, putting other properties in there. Let's do this again next week, Monday morning at 9 o'clock Pacific time. Come on YouTube. I'll try to get the uh, Facebook figured out. I don't know. It might be totally Facebook jailed out. But uh, I'll, I'll try to get the Facebook figured out. And uh, YouTube's always been hardcore for me. Go YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. And um, let's give away some more land. So in the meantime, study the properties on realvacantland.com. Figure out which one would mean the most to you, to your family, to the economics, to your bottom line, to where's the deal, right? Where's the deal? And tell us about it in the chat on the next live call. And if you got the best one, I'll uh, give you a piece of free land. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Bye.